Thanks to its 750 locations and $1 billion annual food court sales, Costco is frequently cited as one of the nation's biggest pizza chains. Sure, the retail giant's ridiculously inexpensive $1.50 hot dog and soda deal gets all the attention, but Costco is a real pizza contender. In fact, according to Business Insider, the company ranked as the 14th largest pizza chain in 2015. Not too shabby for a warehouse store. But what is it that makes Costco's pizza so irresistible? Let's break it down. If you've ever ordered a slice of Costco pizza, you know that it is massive. Like hang off the edges of your paper plate massive. And that giant slice will only set you back a measly $1.99, whether you choose cheese, pepperoni, or a combo. A major factor in what makes Costco pizza great is that they do not skimp on toppings. And you know that each slice you get will be fully loaded, no matter what you order or who's making it. One Costco supervisor bragged on Cora, saying, We never shortcut the ingredients. Everything is measured to a standard. Every Costco pizza you get should have the same amount of sauce, cheese, and toppings. So how do they manage to ensure that each and every pie is so perfect? In a word, robots. The dough is placed onto a machine that effortlessly presses the blob into a nice even circle, guaranteeing that it's not overworked. We'll call that robot number one. After that, Costco food court workers only have to stretch the dough the littlest bit to make it fit the pan before rolling it with a dough docker. This spiky contraption helps ensure that the finished crust doesn't have those huge air bubbles. Now comes the best part. Robot number two, the all-important sauce robot. The pizza pan takes a spin under a spigot that perfectly sauces every pie, dispensing just the right amount each time. It's a magical sight and explains why every Costco pie has the same mouth-watering appearance and consistency. After that, it's back to the humans for the finishing touches, where the cheese gets weighed precisely on a scale and the prescribed amount of pepperoni gets placed just so. Because these pizzas are cooked in only six minutes, thanks to super-efficient conveyor belt ovens that cook from all sides, you can always expect a fresh slice waiting for you at the food court window. In fact, that same supervisor confirms that any pizza slice that doesn't sell within the hour gets tossed out and replaced with a new one to maintain freshness. If there's one widespread knock on Costco pizza, it's that the slices lack crispness. But really, how can you expect a pizza that's loaded with 24 ounces of cheese to stay super crisp? You heard that right! According to the Costco Connection, a cheese pizza from Costco contains 1.5 pounds of aged buttery cheeses and 10-month-aged shredded Parmesan. A pepperoni pie, meanwhile, boasts 60 thin slices of spicy meat, and a combo weighs in at almost 4.5 pounds thanks to all the sausage, pepperoni, green bell peppers, red onion, mushrooms, and black olives. A slight lack of crispness in exchange for that kind of toppings extravaganza seems like a fair trade. Wondering how all that cheese and meat stacks up when it comes to calorie count? Depending on which slice you choose, you're looking at 710 to 760 calories, with total fat hovering around 30 grams each, approximately half of your daily intake, and saturated fat content weighing in around 65 to 70 percent of your recommended daily value. But hey, you're also getting up to 40 grams of protein just for chowing down on an amazing slice of pizza. So there's that. The bottom line is that Costco pizza, in all its greasy, cheesy glory, isn't meant to be diet food. It's just meant to taste good, and it does. Nobody really needs to be told how to shop, right? But when you shop at Costco, the rules are different. As a card-carrying member, you're probably paying a ton for benefits you might not even know you get. You also might be making incorrect assumptions when it comes to the items you select. Here are some huge mistakes you could be making while shopping at Costco. Costco has two options when it comes to personal memberships, Gold Star at $60 and Gold Star Executive at $120. And if you haven't upgraded to Executive yet, you're missing an opportunity to recoup some or all of that annual fee. While it might sound a bit counterintuitive to pay twice as much for the same access into the warehouse store, depending on your spending habits, it could be well worth it. At the Executive level, you receive 2% cash back on most purchases. According to Costco's math, if you spend $500 a month, or $6,000 a year, you're looking at a rewards check of $120 and, in effect, getting your membership totally free. The more you spend, the more you get back, up to $1,000 a year. Even if you don't come close to that maximum, anything over $60 in rewards is money back in your pocket. As a safety net, if you take the plunge and don't spend enough in the first year to come out ahead, Costco will make up the difference by ensuring that first check is at least $60. So what are you waiting for? Go upgrade that membership. Spoiler alert, Costco's layout is confusing by design. 
They want you to get lost in their labyrinth of tempting bargains, so you spend all the money. Think about it. You shopped at the warehouse store just last week, but somehow the layout is very different this time around. According to one former employee who posted on Quora, this dipsy doo switcheroo is no coincidence. I worked at Costco for 13 years. They purposefully move products around to different locations and are constantly rotating a certain percentage of their inventory to new products. This creates a treasure hunt experience as you shop and helps you discover new products that you may not normally see on your shopping visits. In other words, you're much more likely to impulse buy this way. More tricks the retailer uses? The fresh food is all located at the back of the store, so you're forced to walk past all those amazing deals and hopefully put them in your cart. Costco also forgoes any aisle signage, another effort to get you to peruse all the products and buy what you see. If you don't want to spend more than you planned, don't let their layout lead you astray. It always seems to happen. At least one of the items you bought on your last Costco trip is now on sale, and you're kicking yourself for missing out on the savings. The good news? There's a store policy that works in your favor here. The bad news? You have to stand in the return line to take advantage of it. But thanks to Costco's price adjustment policy, the wait can be well worth it, because the store will refund the difference between the price you paid and the sale price of any items within 30 days of purchase. When it comes to whether you need the original receipt, some stores require it while others do not. Your best bet is to stash those slips away for a month and check out the prices of your recent purchases next time you shop. You might be in for a hefty refund. If you're not buying gift cards at Costco, you're doing it wrong, plain and simple. These prepaid cards for restaurants, coffee shops, movie theaters, and other attractions aren't just a good generic gift option, they're a gift you should be giving yourself, too. But why would you bother to buy a gift card for yourself? Why not just pay the restaurant directly? Because you're leaving money on the table, that's why. See, Costco sells $100 gift cards for these establishments at a sizable discount, typically a 20 to 25% savings. Since you were going to spend $100 on movie tickets eventually anyway, you might as well just buy the gift card and keep the $20 to $25 in your pocket. This system makes sense on any goods or services that you use consistently, or even a one-off night out to a nice restaurant. Hey, nobody can fault you for saving a few bucks on date night. Although it might seem like a great deal, not every bulk buy ends up being a money saver in the long run. An entire case of mushroom soup for $4.99? Damn it, Costco, you've done it again. Not all grocery items last forever, even those canned, dried, and bottled. Take condiments, for example. While the six-pack of ketchup bottles might seem like a bargain, you have to remember that the tomato-based product only keeps for six months once opened, and one to two years unopened. Similarly, you only have a few months to use up that giant jar of mayo. Barbecue sauce only lasts about five months after opening, and some hot sauce brands recommend finishing a bottle within six months. When it comes to canned and dried goods, you've got a little more leeway, but there's a limit there too. Dried pastas give you one to two years shelf life, while white rice keeps for up to five years. Brown and wild rice only keeps for up to eight months in the pantry. As for canned goods, acidic products like tomato and citrus will only keep for about 18 months, while most other products hang in there for up to five years. When it comes to the fresh items, you've got to be even more careful. Unless you're feeding a large family, it's probably best to avoid things that ripen or spoil too quickly, like peaches or a tub of leafy greens. Buy fruits and vegetables that last, like apples and carrots, and take advantage of produce that can be refrigerated, like avocados. This also means the freezer section is your friend, and so are individually wrapped snacks. A ginormous bag of something will likely go stale before you get to the bottom, but tiny single-serve bags won't. For household items like toilet paper, if you have a place to store the dozens of rolls, go for it. But when it comes to giant bottles of bleach and bulk disinfectant wipes, they actually lose their effectiveness if stored for too long. So unless you run a cleaning service, that's probably not the best buy for you. The competitive prices on electronics is probably enough to convince you to buy your next TV or laptop from Costco. But when you make the purchase at the warehouse store, it comes with another benefit you might not know about – the Costco Concierge Service. This service, which applies to most major appliances and electronics, comes with two major perks. One, free technical support. Experts are available seven days a week to help you with initial setup and troubleshooting, and will definitely come in handy when you get stumped. Two, it extends the manufacturer's warranty of the product to two years from the date of purchase. Since most items typically come with a one-year warranty, this is huge. A whole extra year of protection free of charge? Now that's savings. As you wander up and down the aisles at Costco, it's hard to miss all the Kirkland brand products. And if you're skipping over them in favor of their brand name counterparts, you're making one of the biggest Costco mistakes of all. First things first, no, Kirkland doesn't always win when it comes to product comparisons. 
Consumer reports indicated that though less expensive, the private label toilet paper and facial tissues ranked lower than national brands when it came to quality. But plenty of other Kirkland products are cheaper, consistently outperform when it comes to both quality and taste, and in some cases may even be manufactured in the very same factories as national brands. Just a few of the areas where Kirkland can brag. The store brand has beaten Oscar Mayer in the bacon game, is one of the few imported oils that met international and U.S. standards, and has even bested Grey Goose vodka more than once in blind taste tests. Even Kirkland batteries, though they might not last as long, come out ahead thanks to the value provided by the low price. In other words, don't be a brand snob. You could end up paying more for an inferior product. Aside from merely telling you the price you'll pay for an item, Costco's price signs have a hidden meaning, too. You'll need to pay attention to get the best deals and, most importantly, to know if your favorite item is about to disappear forever. If the price ends in 0.99 or 0.98, this indicates a regular retail price and probably doesn't translate to any huge savings compared to other retailers. If the price ends in 0 0.89, 0 0.79, 0 0.69, 0 0.59, 0 0.49, 0 0.39, 0 0.29, 0 0.19, or 0.09, this indicates Costco got a manufacturer's deal, meaning they can offer these items at a steeper discount than others. If the price ends in 0.97, this indicates your biggest savings. These are items that need to go and are priced at a discount. If there happens to be an asterisk in the upper right corner of the sign, act fast and stock up because this means that the product is likely going away for good. You just have to keep track of your numbers if you really want to succeed. You might assume that the prices of items inside the Costco warehouses are the same as prices on Costco.com, but you could be wrong. That's why it pays to sign into the Cyberverse and check the online price before you buy. Password enter. Every so often, in addition to the monthly coupon book, members will receive another booklet of sale items, but this one is for online purchases only. If you don't get the mailer, you can check the current offering at the exclusive online-only page of Costco's website. While some of these items are truly only offered online, like bathtubs or sinks, you'll find that others are actually available in the store, but the catch is, even if you can buy the item in the store, the sale price won't apply. You never know what you might save on. Maybe it's $20 off a set of sheets or $100 off a piece of jewelry. The bottom line is, if you can afford to wait a few days to get the item, shopping online can save you some serious money. Here's the greatest Costco hack of them all. Don't pay the membership fee, but take advantage of the member benefits, at least some of them. As a non-member, you probably don't realize all the perks you're missing out on. Have a prescription to be filled? That slip of paper will get you in the door to get to the pharmacy, no membership card required. While you're there, you can also get free health and wellness screenings and even flu shots. Just want to buy some booze? In 16 states, you can do so without a membership. Just tell the employee at the door that's why you're there. Same thing even goes for the food court, but if it's located outside, you don't even need to worry about getting in. Even a regular old shopping trip is a possibility, as long as you have a Costco cash card. You can use it to gain entry to the store and even pay for your items. Costco, officially hacked. Every Costco shopper has been there. You've just spent hours loading up your cart with everything on your shopping list and more than a few things you didn't even know you needed until you saw them. You waited in line, you made it through the checkout, and you're wondering how on earth all of this is going to get in your car. First, though, you have to go through the exit receipt check. It's a weird thing, right? It's like driving along and being followed by a police car. Even if you haven't done anything wrong, it makes it feel like you have. They're watching you, they're checking to make sure you paid for everything, and they want to protect themselves against sticky-fingered customers. Like you. Right? Actually, like that cop who just happened to turn in behind you, there's nothing really sinister about it. A lot of what they're doing is looking out for your best interests. One Costco-centric Reddit thread had employees sharing what they were looking for, and part of it is confirmation that the number of items in the cart is actually the number that's on the receipt. One employee shared some eye-opening figures and claimed their store kept track of how much merchandise was stopped at the door because it wasn't paid for. It was in the tens of thousands of dollars, but the official line is pretty different. MSN did a little digging into just what else those exit greeters are trained to look for and found they're actually checking your receipt to make sure your transaction went smoothly. Ever get home, check your own receipt, and realize you've been overcharged or one of your items was accidentally rung up multiple times? They're looking for that so they can fix it before you get out the door. Still doubtful? As one employee explained on Reddit, Trust me, we're not loss prevention. We have loss prevention in the store and that's not us. One former employee wanted to clear the air on Reddit and said a big part of their job is also making sure customers don't forget some of the things they pay for, but have to pick up separately before they leave. 
It's easy to forget things like gift cards or merchandise that has to be retrieved from inside cases or behind counters after all. They're also looking to make sure any store promotions were properly applied. Because hey, technology isn't perfect, right? Neither are people, and that's why Kevin Hewer, a Costco general manager, told the San Francisco Chronicle they were also looking to make sure cashiers didn't miss anything in the bottom of customers' baskets. Costco isn't the only store to employ exit greeters. Most of the warehouse-style stores do. When MSN reached out to Sam's Club Corporate, they said they purposely hire friendly, chatty exit greeters as a way of making sure app-related transactions went smoothly, to make sure they found everything, address complaints, and share information about upcoming promotions. And Costco representatives say the same thing, with one employee saying they'd cut hundreds of dollars in overcharges and had immediately helped the customers get their refunds. So is the policy legal or is it a violation of your rights? In Costco's case, they're perfectly within their rights because it's written into the membership agreement you voluntarily signed. It's the same for other warehouse-type stores that have similar memberships, like Sam's Club and BJ's. In other words, we don't recommend running out without showing your receipt. But that brings up an important question. What if you do refuse? In 2013, Timothy Walls refused to show his receipt for his $102.66 purchase, and the employee he tried to bypass grabbed his cart and wouldn't let him leave. Walls shoved the employee, and that's when another employee stepped in with some martial arts and broke Walls' leg in several places. Walls sued for $610,000 but lost when the judge ruled he had pushed an employee first. Still, demanding to see your receipt is not okay in most stores. Consumer advocate Edgar Dworsky says that if you're in a conventional retail store where you didn't sign anything agreeing to allow employees to inspect your receipt or your cart when you're leaving, you don't have to hand it over. That return trip to get your refund for a double charge? That's on you. We're all familiar with the image of the Costco bulk shopper who walks out of the store with multiple 48 packs of toilet paper and economy-sized vats of ketchup. But whether you're a wholesale expert or just there for the free samples, there's more to this members-only haven than supersized shampoo. From secret price codes to the strangest items in the store, these are the best tips, tricks, and hacks to make the most out of your next Costco run. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Membership? Excuse me, do you have a membership card? Um, sir, I work here. Really? <laughs> You may have heard the rumor that you can sneakily shop at Costco without a membership. And it's true, you can use a grocery delivery service or a Costco cash card. Although you have to be a member to buy one, you don't have to be a member to use one. Of course, you could always ask a friend with a membership to get a cash card for you. Can't anyone get one of those cards? No, I don't think so. But I can uh, talk to someone if you like. Yeah, put in a good That'd word for great. it. Huh? Targeting the bargains. Product placement is everything when it comes to smart shopping, and the best deals at Costco are usually in the center of the store. You get a some shrimp? The big jumbo kind? Four down, three over. Author of Why We Buy, Paco Underhill, told Bankrate, Membership stores, often governed by space constraints and the fact that those large club stores stock such an incredible range of products, put many of the bargains into what they call center court. Secret pricing. Ooh, birthday cake. Whose birthday is it? Look at the price, Carmine. At five cents a cubic inch, it's all our birthdays. Most savvy shoppers already pay special attention to price. But according to Josh Elledge, founder of SavingsAngel.com, any Costco price ending in 97 cents means the item has been marked down nationally. He says those items don't usually last long because people buy them fast. People absolutely underestimate how much money they spend at the grocery store. If you see an asterisk on the price tag, that's your cue to stock up. According to Consumerist, an asterisk means that the item has hit its lowest price and won't be getting restocked. Same product, different name. Many of Costco's Kirkland brand products are nearly identical to, or even better than, their branded cousins. Welcome to Costmart. I hope you'll take a trip by the deli counter today for a complimentary cube of jalapeno cheddar. I'm lactose intolerant. Where do you keep the cigarettes? One of the most popular Costco brand items is, surprisingly, vodka. According to Munchies, Costco's vodka is made from the same water source as Grey Goose vodka and is even scored higher in many blind taste tests, per research site, under the label. Weekdays are your jam. The worst part about grabbing so many bulk deals during a Saturday Costco run is the never-ending checkout line. But just like most big-box grocery stores, the worst time to shop is on the weekends. Oh, hey, 
I got the toothpaste and the soap. Well, good, now we can open that general store. The crazy coupon lady says the lowest trafficked times at the big box retailer are weekdays between 3 and 5 p.m. And Costco manager John Van Gilder claims you'll be shopping in peace on any day 45 minutes before they close. Stocking up on the weird stuff. If you've ever been overwhelmed by the sheer amount of products offered at Costco, you've probably only begun to scratch the surface. Some of the more unusual items for sale include cars, exotic vacation packages, and coffins. You can also purchase eight-foot-tall teddy bears, gym memberships, vending machines, and wine cellars. <laughs> There's a wine section? Yeah, a really good one just past the tires. The average Costco shopper will probably feel more comfortable sticking to paper towels and olive oil, but it's comforting to know that you could buy a sports car with your Costco membership and use the bear for the carpool lane. Another great Sunday, and not too rough on the old pocketbook. Is working at Costco really all it's cracked up to be? The only way to find out is from employees themselves, and luckily, they're not afraid to talk about their experiences. Here's a look at what it's really like to work at Costco, straight from the people who know best. Working at Costco might seem like a simple job, but employees tell a different story. Apparently, it can be as exhausting as an intense gym session. Rachel, a Costco employee in Colorado, told Mental Floss that employees are the ones who do all the heavy lifting. According to her, when you see pallets stacked with 50-pound bags of flour or sugar or dog food or cat litter, a lot of that stuff had to be stacked by hand by employees before the store opens. Ditto for those giant stacks of shoes and bottles of salsa or five-gallon jugs of cooking oil. It's a lot of hard work. Costco is a membership-based store, meaning you have to pay an annual fee in order to get a card that allows you to shop there and enjoy all of those discounted prices. Every customer is expected to show their membership card to an employee before they walk through the doors. Welcome to Costco. I love you. However, that doesn't mean customers are always happy about doing it. One Costco employee explained on Reddit that one of the hardest jobs there is working the entrance simply because of the people they encounter. The employee said that customers tend to make things harder for the card checkers by not showing their card, blocking the entrance when taking out their card, or forgetting their card and trying to get in anyway. Another user explained that one of the most common issues that comes up is people trying to shop there even if they aren't members. Sorry, folks, but that's not how it works. Costco is known for having a terrific workplace environment, but it's not just the pay that makes it awesome. Employees enjoy lots of great benefits and plenty of perks on the job as well. One of the best has to be the fact that they're able to shop after hours. Kathleen, a Costco employee in Washington, told Mental Floss, You can shop after hours and a lot of employees do that. You just bring your cart to the front register. Costco stores actually keep their member service counter open after the store closes for exactly that reason. Oh, and you can't forget about the fact that employees have access to all of the wonderful free samples that make weekend Costco shopping that much better. And you better believe they take advantage of them. One Reddit user who claimed to have worked there for over seven years said they ate a lot of samples and added a helpful tip to non-employees. The demo people are there every day, but Saturday and Sunday are the prime times to get free grub. Another Reddit user who had worked at Costco for over two years jokingly said that workers there called the samples the employee buffet. Every Costco has the same policy for customers who are leaving the store. After you pay and as you are walking out, an employee checks over your receipt and looks at the items in your cart. But have you ever wondered how they do it so quickly? Apparently, they aren't reading the entire receipt. Thomas, an employee in California, told Mental Floss, We're looking for items on the bottom of the cart, big items like TVs or alcohol. One Reddit user talked about it on a thread, saying that employees count the number of things in your cart and see if it's the same number as on the receipts. They also said that they check for expensive items. Lots of people I knew just checked for the expensive things and didn't bother with anything else. Another user said that they also look for doubles, saying, Most of what we find is actually errors with scanning. Had someone accidentally key in the number for a $1,000 item instead of a bag of avocados once. Costco employees are generally pretty happy, but one very common complaint is that their technology seems to be very outdated across the board. One employee said on Reddit, Whoever is in charge of technological advancement and taking the digital systems that run our entire company into the future needs to take a step back and reevaluate what we're doing. Another employee complained about not being able to look at their schedules or submit time off online, and not having a tablet to use to check inventory, adding, Why do our computers and registers look like they came from the 80s? Why is everything done by paper and pencil? I get that this kind of stuff is expensive to upkeep, and by not doing tech upgrades, we keep our prices low, but it's time to join the rest of the world. Password enter. It's pretty common knowledge that in most stores, there's more inventory in the back. 
All you have to do is ask an employee to check for you. Well, at Costco, what you see is what they have. One Costco employee told Reader's Digest, Costco is a warehouse store in a literal sense. We don't have any additional storage from what you see on the shelves. If it's not there, don't ask us to check the back. The back doesn't exist. One employee said something similar on Reddit, adding that if you notice the item is up on the pallets on the higher shelves, you can try asking someone to get them down. But they may not. The employee said, I've been told they don't take down pallets from the shelves because it would require driving the forklifts through all the customer foot traffic roping off the aisle and the one opposite for safety, and would generally cause too much hassle. If something is up high and there's none on the floor, just go back the next day for it. Pardon me, but I didn't know we really carried these. These? You guys got everything in here. Yeah, we sure do. I mean, is it, is it working out for you? If you've ever worried about how your food is being handled at Costco, let this reassure you. Employees say food safety is a really big deal to them. Employee Rachel told Mental Floss, if an employee forgets to remove their apron before exiting the department, they must remove that apron, toss it into the hamper, and put on a fresh apron because now it's contaminated. She also said that there are rules against employees wearing nail polish near food prep, as it could chip and fall into the food. A Costco employee from Florida echoed the same sentiment. They told Business Insider, We are very strict on food quality and safety. We have safety walks every hour that audit the temperatures of our food coolers and storage. Our famous rotisserie chickens are not allowed to be sold after two hours of sitting in the warmer. Yes, the rumors are true. Working at Costco really does mean terrific benefits. And employees can't stop raving about them. Megan, a former Costco employee, told Yahoo News that there were more than great hourly wage and healthcare benefits. Megan said, While I was at Costco, they gave employees complimentary memberships to the store. One employee told Business Insider that they got paid holidays, a generous 401k plan, and affordable healthcare that includes dental and vision insurance. An employee with over seven years of experience told Reddit users that employees get a free executive membership. Another random perk? One employee said they're given a very special gift for the start of the holiday season. We get free turkeys for Thanksgiving. I didn't even know that before I started working there. It's a nice perk. We have to agree with that. Costco is known for their fantastic flexible return policy, which comes with very few restrictions. But be wary of taking advantage of it. Employees say they'll start to notice if you're returning too many items. California employee Thomas told Mental Floss, they can tell just by the way you talk. When someone comes in to return something without a receipt and they go, oh, you can look it up on my account, that's a tell. It tells me you return so much stuff that you know what we can find on the computer. Another employee with over two years of experience there explained on Reddit that while they don't flag people, they can make comments on your membership. The employee said, if a return was over $100, we had to call a supervisor to sign off on it. If it was over $300, we had to call a manager. The soups and managers were so busy, though, and got so tired of this rule that they literally only came down to sign the receipt. They would ask us, do you think it's okay? And if we said we were okay with it, then they would sign it. Most of the time, a trip to Costco means you're ready to stock up on enough food and supplies to last a few weeks. But sometimes, you go to just grab a few things. And those times, you've probably thought it would be nice to have an express line to go to. There's a legit reason most stores don't have them, though. Costco employee Rachel told Mental Floss that the supervisor in charge gets a head count of customers, so they always know how many people are in the store and have an idea of when they'll be checking out. They can then determine how many registers should be open. They also don't hesitate to pull employees from other departments to help out with lines. There are plenty of great things about working at Costco, but make no mistake, it isn't a walk in the park. Employees work hard for those benefits. Aside from the physical labor, many employees say they find the job to be pretty stressful. An anonymous employee wrote on Quora, Costco is an incredibly stressful place to work, and you are required as full-time to work for 40 hours a week, generally during the most inconvenient times and often on weekends and evenings, giving you very little time away from work. Another employee echoed that sentiment. If you do night cleanup or morning stocking, you will be under very tight deadlines to get your work done on time, and you will often face situations where you are screwed no matter what you do. It can be very stressful and takes a certain mental fortitude. I could only do it for six years before I burned out and had to move on. Even if the job is stressful, most employees say the job is still well worth it. One employee from Arizona told Business Insider, I legitimately love my job. An employee who worked for the company for over two years told Reddit, the company really does strive to treat their employees fairly. It's actually nearly impossible for them to fire you if you've been there for a few years. However, according to one employee on Reddit, the best thing about working there is simple. The fact that everything is done properly. There is a real emphasis on doing things the right way rather than the fastest or cheapest. It's a real testament to the quality of this company. Or to put it another way. It's fun. Everybody knows everybody. They talk about values and they have good snacks. Sounds like a place we both know and love. 
There are plenty of good reasons to go to Costco, but the free samples? They just might be the best reason of all. So what secrets don't you know about those freebies they hand out? Let's dig into the truth behind Costco's free sample program. Costco is frequently named a top company to work for due to their competitive compensation and generous benefit package. But unfortunately, since the workers handing out samples aren't actually employed by Costco, they aren't paid like the other store workers. All those employees standing behind the sample carts are actually employed by club demonstration services, and they're considered outside vendors. According to Groundswell, this means that the CDS demonstrators are subject to very different working conditions like part-time employment and no benefits. They make substantially less than Costco employees and are only eligible for an hourly rate increase of 25 cents per year. As of 2014, they made approximately half the wage of a regular Costco employee. Ever wonder why the people giving out the samples never know where the chicken broth or the tomato paste is? It's because it's not their job to know, and even though they're in the store all day, it's almost impossible for them to learn where things are. One Redditor who says they serve samples at Costco explained, Costco rearranges their products almost daily. They want to provide a treasure hunt atmosphere to their members. This leaves them wandering around aimlessly, and before they know it, their cart is full and they don't know how it got that way. And that's why the people handing out the samples don't know where to send you to pick up the product. You'll need to find that yourself. Guess what I found? Coffins. They sell baby formula and they sell coffins. You can literally buy everything you need from birth to death. There's plenty of horror stories out there of finding nasty surprises in food. But have you ever found anything sketchy in a Costco sample? Probably not, and you probably won't either. That's because, according to a Costco sample worker on Reddit, the hygiene practices are pretty stringent. When one Redditor voiced their concerns regarding the cleanliness of not only the employees, but the tools and equipment used to serve the samples, the vendor replied, "...we have annoyingly strict hygiene policies. All the equipment is sanitized before we use it, we change our gloves every five minutes, and any time a member touches something they aren't supposed to, we throw it away. Workers are apparently held to strict standards when it comes to their own personal hygiene as well." And while it might lead to some uncomfortable behind-the-scenes conversations, customers know they can snack away safely. If there's a downside to the Costco sample program, it's all those tiny containers and plastic forks that get served with each and every bite. Not only are food packaging waste and single-use plastics filling up the landfills, but it turns out they're also a nuisance in the stores, too. Business Insider spoke to Costco employees about their biggest pet peeves, and customers who leave their sample waste wherever they please ranks high on the list. Sure, there's garbage bins at every station, but somehow Costco employees still end up cleaning up a seemingly endless number of those little containers. Come on, sample fanatics! The least you can do is clean up after yourself when eating all that free food. According to one Costco sample man and Redditor, the weekends are prime time for the most variety. He gives these words of wisdom. Saturdays and Sundays will always have the most. If you want unlimited amounts of samples and no lines, go on a Monday or Tuesday. But there are less to choose from. On the weekends, go right around 1 or 2 because all shifts are out at that time. It's also worth noting that you've got to get there before 5 p.m. Even though stores close later, that's when the sample vendors wrap up for the day. And one more piece of advice. During the holidays, the aisles will be filled with sample workers hoping to help you choose some goodies for all those parties. Good to know. We're all a little shy when it comes to grabbing a second or fifth sample, but it turns out that there's no reason to be bashful after all. According to CBS News, Costco's policy actually encourages vendors to pass out an unlimited number of samples to customers. And Redditors who have done it agree. When asked on Reddit if the vendors were allowed to hand out more than just a single sample to each customer, here's what one had to say. Absolutely! You don't even need to ask. As long as you don't take an entire tray or take three when there's a crowd, you're more than welcome to take multiple samples. An entire tray? That sort of extreme gluttony doesn't really happen, though, does it? Of course it does. One vendor recalled an extreme incident, saying, "...once I was giving out Ferrero Rocher, and this 15-year-old took nine trays worth. That was 63 candies and about 50 bucks worth of product. Right into his pockets." So enjoy, but please don't be that customer. How does Costco manage to keep its bacon so inexpensive? They have to be trimming the fat somewhere, right? Keep watching because we're about to reveal Costco's secret to cheap bacon. Costco's private label brand, Kirkland Signature, is one of the most beloved brands the warehouse retailer sells. As the saying goes, the proof is in the pudding, and all you have to do is look at the numbers. The amount of money Costco's members shell out for products being sold under this mark banner is quite telling. Costco's Kirkland Signature raked in $39 billion in revenue in 2018, which is approximately one-quarter of all sales for the warehouse giant. Pretty impressive. 
In fact, private labels have quietly become a vital part of the shopping canvas. A recent poll revealed that 46% of shoppers find these store brands to be very influential to their buying choices, with Kirkland leading the charge. One of those private label items that Costco members love to buy is Kirkland bacon. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, no, 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 it's bacon! It's easy to understand why. Bacon in bulk can never be a bad thing, especially at such a fantastic price. Depending on location, you can expect to pay anywhere from $10 to $16, which is approximately $1.50 cheaper per pound than other leading household name brands. How can Costco sell their bacon for so much less than its competitors? We've done our homework to find out the real reason Costco bacon is so cheap. According to a Wall Street Journal article, one of the reasons Costco is able to sell its bacon cheaper than competitors is because of how it determines what products to sell under the Kirkland brand. It has to be viable to sell it at 20% less than a comparable branded version without compromising profit or quality. But that's not the only reason. CNN Business suggests that it is Costco's steady partnerships with vendors that helps the warehouse receive good deals, which allows the retail powerhouse to pass along a cost savings to the customer. This, in turn, moves a higher product volume, resulting in a sales boost for the partner. However, it's important to point out that in recent months, there have been discussions on the Consumer Affairs website from Costco customers that are falling out of love with the Kirkland Signature Bacon. One Seattle, Washington reviewer from January 25, 2020 wrote, I bought Kirkland bacon many times before with no problem, which is why I was so shocked that two of the four packages were full of very fatty, broken pieces with not much actual meat. Another reviewer from North Hollywood shared this sentiment, writing, The outside package is good, mostly meaty, but as you go further inside, it becomes white fatty and slices are becoming so thin and cut small that I can't properly cook them without them being burnt. Almost like a bait and switch. Costco has had some pretty large-scale scandals in the headlines. They've centered around everything from their pharmacy to their hot dogs, but their customers have mostly stuck with them through it all. These are the biggest scandals Costco has endured. In 2013, jewelry giant Tiffany & Company filed a lawsuit against Costco. According to the suit, Costco's in-store signage identified their rings as Tiffany and misled customers into thinking they were buying authentic Tiffany jewelry. The problem? Tiffany had no agreement whatsoever with Costco, and the lower-priced rings weren't actually from Tiffany. Costco claimed they were simply using the term Tiffany to refer to the style of the ring and not the brand. They never branded any rings, bags, or boxes with the Tiffany name or logo didn't use the well-known blue packaging and didn't use the name on their website. Tiffany used that all against them, arguing that made it easier for them to slip under the radar. In 2015, CNN reported that a judge had ruled Costco was guilty of, quote, trademark infringement and trademark counterfeiting. They were hit with a massive fine of more than $19 million, which Bloomberg reported they were appealing. Costco faced an uphill battle because it's been declared that their signage and their imitation of Tiffany Styles represented, quote, a bad faith intent to deceive customers, which is never good for a business. There's a ring. Holy shit, is that real? Yeah, they say three years salary. Oh, no. The roots of this one go back to 2014, when The Guardian launched an investigation into the shrimping industry in Thailand. The six-month investigation uncovered some dark things about CP Foods, who supplied shrimp not only to Costco, but also to Walmart and several major European chains. Former slaves had testified that when they paid brokers to find them work, they were instead sold to boat captains who then passed them on to companies that supplied the CP Foods food chain. There were reports that they were held captive at sea for years, witnessed beatings and executions, and were forced to work 20-hour shifts while fueled up on meth. Some were working on ships that farmed so-called trash fish, which were then fed to the farmed shrimp that eventually ended up on grocery store shelves. Three law firms in California filed a lawsuit against Costco to block the sale of shrimp connected with the Asian slave trade, but the 2015 lawsuit was ultimately dismissed in 2017. Reuters reported that it was ruled. The suit failed to establish that the world's second-largest retail chain was bound to inform customers that modern-day slavery could be a part of its supply chain. First, a little background on how pharmacies work. When it comes to generic drugs, some chain pharmacies will demand payments from drug companies for stocking their particular brand of medication. 
They're called pharmacy rebates, and it ultimately means people pay more for the medicine they need. Thanks to these rebates, Canadians pay some of the highest drug prices in the world for generics. But in 2013, the province of Ontario made the practice illegal. One salesman from Ranbaxy Pharmaceuticals says the practice didn't stop at Costco. His accusations and his recorded phone call with a Costco executive who said Ranbaxy wasn't paying them enough to put their drugs on its shelves triggered a major investigation, says CBC. Costco was accused of receiving around 1.2 million Canadian dollars in illegal payments in a kickback scheme. The two Costco pharmacy execs named were fined by the Ontario College of Pharmacists, and even as the accusations turned into a provincial investigation, Costco denied any wrongdoing. They issued a formal statement saying they decided to stop giving kickbacks to pharmaceutical companies of their own accord after an internal investigation, but they were still fined over 7 million Canadian dollars in February 2019. Hillendale Farms was supplying Costco and other retailers with a huge percentage of their eggs, and when grisly undercover footage was released in June 2015, the public was shocked. The footage was shot by an investigator for the Humane Society of the United States. He spent three weeks working at the farms as a day laborer and found the farm's chickens were living in horrible conditions. Cages were dirty, dead chickens dropped to the ground and stayed there so long they were mummified, and live chickens had little to no room to even move. Hillendale disputed the footage, saying it didn't show the norm and claiming the investigator was documenting the very conditions he had been hired to clean up. While the Humane Society did admit the video was simply a small snapshot, they also added there were a ton of red flags that more was going on at the facility than Hillendale was saying. As for Costco, they felt the pressure and announced in December of that year that they would carry only cage-free eggs. It's no secret that Costco customers love their rotisserie chickens and their hot dogs, so when the corporation announced they were going to be getting rid of their Polish dog in 2018, social media was not having any of that nonsense, especially when it was announced that they were replacing the favorite with things like plant-based protein salads and organic burgers. I'd rather have an acai bowl than a Polish dog, said no one with functioning taste buds. Even though CFO Richard Galanti assured the Seattle Times that the original all-beef hot dog combo wasn't going away, it didn't really do much to comfort some people. Instead, devoted fans created the hashtag SaveThePolishDog in a push to use social media for good rather than evil. Alas, it didn't work. But there is some good news. The Polish dog is still being served in Canadian locations. Time to start planning your next vacation. Despite Costco employees' overall satisfaction on the job and extreme loyalty to the brand, both current and former Costco staff do have some suggestions on what not to buy from the Wholesale Warehouse Club. Here's a list of things to skip on your next Costco run, according to the people who probably know best. This might seem like a no-brainer, but Costco workers all seem to consistently remark that buying fruit at the famous warehouse store is risky. Most say it has nothing to do with the quality of the items, but more about the fact that it's usually impossible to eat all of it before it goes bad. Aside from the principle that it might not be smart to buy a perishable item in bulk, one longtime Costco Produce Department employee admitted in a Reddit thread that there are overall issues with the store's produce. The user revealed, mid-level management and store managers know very little about handling produce in general, and most just don't care because it is physically hard to do. When Business Insider spoke to Costco employees about what they avoid buying in the store, the answers varied. One worker was adamant that customers steer clear of the mayo. The folks at Eat This, Not That seem to agree with the Costco worker, arguing that buying condiments like mayonnaise in bulk, especially for a family, isn't wise. The site reports, Your favorite condiments like ketchup, mayo, and mustard tend to be loaded with sugar, salt, and other preservatives. Despite this, they can still go bad. Nobody wants a rep as the neighborhood mayo hoarder, so props to Costco workers for keeping customers in check. Sure, Costco does have a solid reputation for selling super cheap gasoline, but if you're looking to service your entire vehicle, perhaps you should consider visiting an auto shop rather than a store that also sells wine. There's a wine section? Yeah, a really good one just past the tires. No way, they do not have... Oh, but they do. However, a Reddit user who claimed to have worked at Costco in various capacities warned consumers that the tire center wasn't worth their time, saying, The tire selection is very low, and you can usually get them quite a bit cheaper somewhere else if you shop around. On another Reddit thread, a former Costco tire center worker wrote, Compare prices and warranties. Often, Costco has the better deal, sometimes not. Customers and workers consistently praise the Costco food court and the delicacies from its own brand, Kirkland Signature. 
However, one Costco manager suggests you avoid the infamous Kirkland Signature Chicken Bake. The manager explained on Quora, Calorically, these bad boys are over a thousand calories. Crispy dough, cheese, chicken, bacon, and Caesar dressing with a coating of Parmesan cheese on top. A treat once in a while if you are into it, but definitely not a daily go-to. In fact, serving up delicious food like the chicken bake is essentially just a sales tactic for Costco. The manager revealed, many of the food court items exist just to get you in the door. Come for a chicken bake and buy a TV on a coupon that you just can't pass up. Costco has a ton of great deals, but electronics might not be one of them. One Costco manager revealed on Quora, with internet shopping being what it is today, there are an unbelievable amount of hot deals going on at any given time in every major category of electronics. On a day-to-day -day basis, I stand by the statement that no one will beat Costco's price in a direct comparison. But for electronics, I will allow that one might get lucky to the tune of a few bucks here or there. According to research from Clark, there are lots of items available at a much lower cost on Amazon, although Costco did beat the online mega retailer on a few items. So while it might be tempting to buy your next giant flat-screen TV from a place known for selling giant stuff, you might want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Or your wallet. There's a long-standing rumor that Costco's Kirkland Signature Vodka is actually Grey Goose in a cheaper outfit. While it's been confirmed that both vodkas have the same water source, Grey Goose maintains that it's not Kirkland's signature vodka, claiming Grey Goose has their own exclusive well, uses their own proprietary methods, and distills their vodka a whopping 800 kilometers away from where Kirkland is made. Regardless, it seems Costco's store brand may actually be better. The two vodkas have been through several blind taste tests, and Kirkland's signature usually wins. Plus, depending on your location, it may be half the price of the name brand stuff, or even less. Oh my god, amazing. Yeah. Cam, what is this place? If you want a huge selection of colors to pick from for your next set of bed sheets, you might want to head to Bed Bath & Beyond. Apparently, Costco is coming up short in the linens department. While Costco does sell sheets and towels, the variety is pretty weak. Costco merchandise manager for bedding and home Jim Clower even told CBS News, if you want 20 colors, this isn't the place. It also seems like customers aren't really sold on the quality of the Costco brand sheets either. Reviews from Costco's website describe them as uncomfortable, poor quality, and disappointing quality. In a Business Insider ranking of the best sheets for your bed, none of the lines carried in Costco even made the cut. Did you know Costco also doubles as a travel agency? Vacations? At Costco? Sure, planes aren't taking off and landing behind the warehouses, but you can reserve rental cars, hotels, vacation packages, and cruises through the company. But just because they offer it doesn't mean it's worth doing. A former marketing manager for Costco Travel revealed on Quora, Costco travel deals really aren't that amazing. If you're going to Costco Travel expecting to consistently find something rare and wonderful, don't. Take it from a guy who worked there, you will likely find similar or better deals on one of the many online travel sites available today. Even if you're not a Costco member, you've no doubt heard about Costco's rotisserie chicken. Here's everything you need to know about them, from what's really in them, to how they stack up to the competition, to what to do with it once you get home. The ingredient list for a Costco rotisserie chicken is actually pretty simple. A whole chicken, water, and seasonings including salt, sodium phosphate, modified food starch, potato dextrin, carrageenan, sugar, dextrose, and spice extractives. These are pre-seasoned in factories. They arrive at the supermarket mm. so that an employee can put on the skewer and cook it. Some of those chemical-sounding words might seem unusual, but there's nothing too terribly scary here. Sodium phosphate is an additive that helps keep meats moist and maintains freshness. Modified food starch is an additive typically used for thickening, stabilizing, or emulsifying. Potato dextrin is a thickener and a sweetener, but can also be used to enhance crispness in foods. Dextrose is a simple sugar made from corn. Carrageenan, a preservative made from seaweed that, in chicken, helps to retain water, is probably the most controversial ingredient here. Though it's FDA-approved, there is some evidence to suggest that it triggers negative health effects in some. For the most part, it seems these additives ensure maximum tenderness and provide that always-winning combo of salty and sweet goodness. Most likely, you probably eat plenty of foods with way scarier labels that don't taste anywhere near as good. 
Costco's rotisserie chicken is missing something that's typically pretty common among other grocery store rotisserie chickens, monosodium glutamate, or MSG. Although MSG tends to get a bad rap, there's no doubt that it makes food taste amazing with all its flavor-enhancing abilities. But that's neither here nor there because Costco's chicken just doesn't need it to taste amazing. Another thing you don't have to worry about with Costco's rotisserie chicken? Gluten. A company representative confirmed that the chickens are gluten-free, which is not always the case with grocery store rotisserie chickens. If there's one knock on any brand of rotisserie chicken, it's the high sodium content. There's a lot of salt in a rotisserie chicken. There's probably more salt than you would use if you were roasting a chicken at home. Costco's comes packed with its fair share, but it's certainly not the worst. Nutritionist Bonnie Tobdix told Today that a three-ounce serving of rotisserie chicken can have as much as 600 milligrams of sodium. The same serving size of Costco's rotisserie chicken comes in at 460 milligrams. A Sam's Club rotisserie chicken has around 550 milligrams for a three-ounce serving. Some chickens have less sodium, though. Publix's, for example, has around 250 milligrams per three-ounce serving. And let's be clear, none of these rotisserie chickens come close to the sodium level of a fast-food burger. A McDonald's double quarter pounder with cheese has 1,310 milligrams of sodium. A Wendy's Baconator has 1,630 milligrams. According to the FDA, the recommended daily value of sodium is less than 2,300 milligrams. So you can have five servings of Costco's rotisserie chicken or one Baconator. And as long as we're talking nutrition, here's what else you get with that three ounce serving of Costco rotisserie chicken. 140 calories, seven grams of fat, and 19 grams of protein. The big appeal of Costco is great deals on supersized products, like that giant stuffed bear they sell. And you should expect no less with Costco's rotisserie chicken. For the bargain basement cost of $4.99, you get a monster of a bird whose price and weight beat the pants off competitors' offerings. Coming in at a weight of at least three pounds after cooking, Costco's rotisserie chicken dwarfs those sold by other stores. According to the Wall Street Journal, a one and a half to two pound bird is what you'll typically find elsewhere, and you could pay $7 or more for it. You don't need to be a math whiz to see that paying $5 for a three pound chicken is better than paying $7 for a two pounder. Not only is it a steal for its size, but Costco typically ranks number one in rotisserie chicken taste tests, which is unsurprising if you've ever tried one. Whether it goes up against Sam's Club, Walmart, Kroger, or Whole Foods, Costco is tops. Even knowing the value proposition, you still want to pick the best, freshest bird from what's available. And once you know what to look for, it's easy. Bon Appetit senior food editor Rick Martinez says that picking the heaviest bird also means picking the freshest, because a heavier chicken indicates that its juices haven't yet evaporated under the heat lamps. Martinez explains, You'll feel a noticeable difference between the birds that just came out of the oven and ones that have been sitting there all day. The skin also tells a tale. You want evenly browned and taut skin because, Martinez says, as the juices leave the meat, the chicken's skin begins to shrivel and becomes discolored. A former Costco meat department manager shared another useful tip on Reddit, advising, look for ones that touch the top of the lid, they weigh the most. Also, be sure to grab your Costco rotisserie chicken at the end of your shopping trip. It's easy to get lost in the maze of aisles, and for safety's sake, the USDA recommends that cooked food be refrigerated within two hours to prevent bacteria growth. One downside to be aware of if you've never tried a Costco rotisserie chicken before, the skin will almost certainly not be crispy. After it's roasted to a tender perfection, that rotisserie chicken gets placed into its plastic container, waiting to go home with you. By the time it makes its journey to your kitchen, that skin is more soggy than crisp. But don't worry, it's still utterly delicious, and you will definitely have to restrain yourself from stripping each and every last bit of salty brown skin off in one sitting. It's just not crispy. Costco's rotisserie chickens are a well-known loss leader. If you're not familiar with the term, Costco is willing to sell those chickens at $4.99, even if they're not making any money on them. Because chances are, anyone who makes the trip to Costco to buy one is going to buy other stuff too. Chickens are a lure to get customers in the door. They're placed strategically at the back of every Costco, so customers might pick up other items along the way. How often do you run in, grab a hot rotisserie chicken, and beeline it to the registers without grabbing anything else? Nine times out of ten, you're leaving Costco with a whole lot more than that $4.99 rotisserie chicken and a whole lot less money in your wallet.
Costco might be willing to sell you a delicious chicken for under $5, but it's certainly not doing it for philanthropic reasons. As with many grocery store offerings, Costco's rotisserie chickens come packaged in a plastic clamshell. And that seems like a fairly logical and inexpensive way to get that steaming hot chicken from the warehouse store to your kitchen, right? But it turns out there is another option that uses a lot less plastic. In May 2019, The Takeout reported that Whole Foods would begin selling its rotisserie chickens in bags rather than hard plastic clamshells, a move the company says that, along with other packaging changes, will reduce an estimated 800,000 pounds of plastic waste per year. Wegmans had already made the change for its rotisserie chickens and claims to use 75% less plastic than the standard domes. With 64 million Costco rotisserie chickens sold each year, you can imagine how much plastic waste all those clamshells add up to, because they're not recyclable everywhere. Something to think about next time you pick up a Costco bird. According to deal-seeking Redditors, at some Costco locations, unsold rotisserie chickens are chilled and repurposed into packs of eight-leg quarters, which include the thigh and the drumstick for $4.99, the same price as a whole chicken. Yes, you're not getting the two breasts or the two tiny wings, but the six additional thighs and drumsticks are certain to more than make up for that. In the know, Redditors advise that certain times are better than others to score this deal, saying that early mornings are best, particularly Tuesday through Friday. The chickens have a greater chance of selling out on the weekends, meaning there won't be any leftovers to be sold. Want to get the most meat off your Costco rotisserie chicken? According to Rachel Ray Every Day, it's all about that wishbone, baby. The wishbone is good for making more than wishes once you've carved your bird. Pulling it out before you start to carve is the key to success. The publication describes the simple three-step process, saying, Feel for the Y-shaped wishbone between the neck and the breast. Make a small cut behind the bone, and then use your fingers to loosen it from the flesh. Run your fingers along the backbone and under the breast meat to remove the breast in one piece. That's it. You'll save time and spare yourself the aggravation of wrestling with the carcass to get every last scrap of breast meat off. Winner, winner, as it were. Stock recipes typically call for the bones and scraps left over after breaking down raw chicken. But if you're not using the carcass from your Costco rotisserie chicken to make your stock, you're missing out. According to Bon Appetit, when you use the bones from an already roasted bird, you'll actually be left with a darker stock than from raw chicken, which ultimately means more flavor will be added to whatever dish you add the stock to. The process for making stock with pre-cooked rotisserie chicken is the same as using raw chicken parts. Just add water, vegetables, and aromatics, like garlic, then simmer for an hour or more and strain. While spending the time to make stock from a convenience item like rotisserie chicken might seem like a lot of work, think about it this way. You just paid $4.99 for that bird, which is a steal to begin with, and now for a few pennies worth of veggies, you're also getting a pot of rich, dark stock. Isn't that worth the trouble? Say you want to make a recipe, a pot pie or some fried rice perhaps, with your Costco chicken but your recipe calls for a certain amount of meat and you have no idea how much a rotisserie chicken will actually yield. Well, don't worry, it's a lot. According to Betty Crocker, the average rotisserie chicken is about two pounds and will yield three cups of meat, two cups white, one cup dark. That translates to about one pound of meat and a pound of scraps, but Costco's rotisserie chickens are substantially larger than the average bird. So how much can you expect from them? Food blogger Judy Wright broke down two Costco chickens and got more than seven and a half cups from them. That's a whopping five pounds total, or about two and a half pounds from each. That's a lot more than your standard rotisserie chicken and should be plenty for whatever recipe you've got in mind. Have a blue taste of chicken. Just a bit. Just a taste. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Mmm. Delicious, right? There's no worse sin than taking a perfectly cooked rotisserie chicken, bringing it home, sticking it in the refrigerator until dinner time, and then completely ruining it when you reheat it. All that beautifully tender meat gets turned into chicken-flavored shoe leather after a couple minutes in the microwave. But take comfort, there is a way to successfully reheat your Costco rotisserie chicken without rendering it inedible. According to Alana Karp, head chef and culinary co-founder at Plated, You've got to use the oven for best results. And the key is adding some liquid to the situation. Grab a high-sided baking dish, plop your rotisserie chicken inside, and pour about a quarter of an inch of chicken stock or broth into the dish. 
Reheat the chicken at 400 degrees until the stock is bubbling and the chicken is warmed through. Carp promises that the liquid will ensure a moist, reheated bird. It takes a little more time, but you'll be glad you exercised a little patience rather than trying to choke down a dried-out, microwaved mess. The 150 hot dog and soda combo at the Costco food court represents one of the best fast food values in history. This quarter-pound all-beef behemoth isn't just a great value, it's downright delicious. Here are the reasons why the hot dogs at Costco are so, so good. Up until 2008, the hot dogs being served at the Costco food court were standard-issue Hebrew National all-beef kosher hot dogs. Around that time, though, the supply of those kosher hot dogs began to dwindle and costs began to rise. That's when Costco decided to step up its hot dog game even further and start throwing some of their annual operating budget at moving their hot dog manufacturing operations in-house. According to the company's explanation, the Kirkland brand hot dogs you'll get at a Costco food court today are 10% heavier and longer than the old and they're a better quality. That's a win! In order to keep up with demand, Costco constructed a dedicated hot dog manufacturing facility in Los Angeles, and when that wasn't enough, later added a second facility in Chicago. That ought to be enough to keep the dogs coming for a long, long time. Inspiring feelings of shame and inadequacy and lesser hot dogs everywhere, the first thing you'll notice about Costco hot dogs is their size. Weighing in at more than a quarter of a pound, or four ounces, this is a hot dog that eats more like a meal. As a point of reference, a standard-issue hot dog from the arguably more famous Oscar Mayer clocks in at just 1.58 ounces. According to MyFitnessPal, this hulking meat tube with bun will add 552 calories and 32 grams of fat to your daily intake. And that's before you heap on the complimentary ketchup, mustard, relish, onions, and sauerkraut. That's dinner sorted. Ask any of your woke vegan friends about their lifestyle choices and they'll probably start lecturing you on the hidden evils of hot dogs. Their argument isn't totally without merit. Lots of hot dogs are made with some sketchy ingredients, which probably wouldn't even legally qualify as food in some more evolved societies. Bargain basement hot dogs are unholy chemical mashups of spare chicken trimmings, discarded scrap heap organs, including ground up livers, kidneys, and hearts, and apparently at least 2% of the time, traces of human DNA. That ringing you hear is every single one of your mental alarm bells sounding at the exact same time. Not at Costco, though. The big box giant's signature Kirkland hot dogs are made of 100% beef, with no questionable variety meats included, people-based or otherwise. Questionable meat isn't the only problem plaguing competing value brand hot dogs. Many of them are loaded with additional chemical additives and stabilizers, which can start to sound a lot more like a chemistry experiment gone awry than an actual food product intended for humans. Unlike the cut-rate hot dogs sold at many venues, however, Costco controls the entire manufacturing process, ensuring that their hot dogs contain no byproducts, corn syrup, phosphates, fillers, or artificial colors or flavors. There's not a lot to be confident in in this crazy, mixed-up world. But the ingredients in the hot dogs at the Costco food court aren't a bad place to start. Ask any armchair expert about the wisest way to stretch a dime into a dollar when it comes to food budget and maximizing your caloric intake at the lowest possible price, and most will give you the same answer. You've got to work your free topping game to its maximum possible potential. While many Costco's turn the straightforward application of ketchup, yellow mustard, and sweet pickle relish into an all-you-can-eat squirt self-service situation, don't be fooled into thinking those are your only topping options. Many Costco's also keep a semi-secret stash of diced raw onions alongside a briny vat of sauerkraut behind the counter, and all you have to do is ask the helpful counter clerk to hook you up. Best of all, these add-ons are completely free for the asking. As you might expect, Costco isn't making a ton of money on their $1.50 hot dog and soda combo. In fact, the company loses money on every combo sold to the tune of more than 100 million hot dog meals each year. And according to the company, that's just fine. Shocking, right? Why this commitment to a product that costs the company money with every sale? The answer is twofold. First, losing a few cents on a hot dog combo that may lure shoppers into a store that sells everything from $1,000 big screen TVs to cruises makes a ton of financial sense. Just one sale of a big ticket item instantly wipes out the losses on hundreds or even thousands of hot dogs. But there's another reason to keep the discount hot dog train rolling. A busy food court creates a buzzing, family-friendly atmosphere, and that cheap meal for the whole family helps shoppers justify the yearly cost of membership. And for you, the loyal customer, you just know that hot dog tastes so, so much better since you know you're getting a crazy good deal on that full meal. The food court at Costco offers a full menu of cheap, filling, and dare we say, really good food. 
But if you've never dined at Costco, there are a few things you should know ahead of time to help maximize the experience. The right to eat at a Costco food court used to be considered one of the perks of Costco membership and not an option for the general public. But if you're not the kind of person who wants to shop in bulk and you're just in for the food court, it's going to take a lot of hot dogs to make the $60 annual membership fee worth it. I've got tons of it at Costco. You see, I've got an exclusive membership card. With that card, I get access to the whole place. You might think that you would need that shiny membership card to gain entrance to the Costco food court, but it turns out that's not the case. A Costco representative confirmed to Cooking Light in 2018 what we all secretly hoped was the truth, as the food court is, indeed, open to all members of the public. If your local Costco has an outside food court, you can just walk right up to the window and place your order, no questions asked. But if you're visiting a location with an inside food court, it's likely that you'll need to enter through the exit to find that glorious display of cheap eats. If there's any doubt about where to go, just ask an employee at the door. They'll be happy to point you in the right direction. If you find yourself standing in a long checkout line at Costco, you may feel discouraged by the prospect of having to wait in yet another line just to place an order at the food court. After all, after you've waited to put $400 worth of spaghetti sauce onto your battered and broken debit card, the notion of repeating the whole process just to add another $1.50 to your tally can seem discouraging. Fortunately, there's a solution. If you know what you plan to order at the food court, you can politely ask your cashier in the warehouse store to add your food items to your main order. Then you can march over with your receipt and show it to whomever's working the counter at the food court. Just like that, you've got a full stable of bulk pantry items and a delicious ready-to-eat hot dog all in one transaction, without risking further injury to your card-swiping hand. If you think a stop at the Costco food court could be part of a commitment to a healthy lifestyle, you're probably barking up the wrong tree. The pizza is pretty much comically bad for you. So is Costco's signature chicken bake, which is basically a Hot Pocket-esque mashup of chicken breast and bacon, all bound together by rivers of melted cheese and Caesar salad dressing. Costco doesn't publish the nutritional information for its food court items online, though they do offer printouts in person. In terms of total calories per serving, Spoon University has identified the pepperoni pizza, hot turkey and provolone sandwich, and the chicken bake as the worst offenders. A single slice of pepperoni pizza clocks in at 710 grease-soaked calories, which elevates a snack into full meal territory pretty quickly. The hot turkey and provolone sandwich comes in at 730 calories, which is quite a lot for a post-shopping lunch. Somehow, the chicken bake is even worse, carrying a calorie load of 770, which is a pretty sizable portion of what the average person should eat in an entire day. If you've got a busy day planned, you may not think that you have time to sit down to a freshly baked hot pizza. After all, at most pizza places, you have to place your order, then wait around as it cooks and then gets put into a box or onto a metal tray. Most of the time, having a pizza is a process that takes at least a half hour, and that's without even factoring in the time it takes to eat it. But that's not the case at Costco, where they've got pizza prep down to a record-breaking science. Balls of thawed dough are loaded onto sheeters, which automatically press the dough into perfectly round, thin pizza shapes. The dough is transferred to perforated pans and then placed under a pizza sauce squirting robot that rotates the dough and ensures even coverage. The entire pizza prep process can take less than 30 seconds, which means that if you're hankering for some cheesy saucy goodness, Costco can take care of you right away. Even if the trays of ready-to-serve slices are empty, all hope isn't lost. Just ask the cashier when more slices will be ready, and it'll probably be a lot quicker than you'd expect. Pizza! Pizza, pizza, go in tummy, me so hungry, me so hungry. While the wait time for a slice of Costco pizza may be incredibly short, that's not always the case for an entire pie. There have to be slices ready for that long line of pizza fans, meaning there's not always an entire extra pie to spare. But if you don't want to wait around for your pizza to cook, you can game the system somewhat by ordering ahead of time and planning your day around your pizza. That's pretty much how most of us are living our lives anyway. As reported by Taste of Home, Friday and Saturday nights tend to be prime pizza time at Costco. 
During these evenings, customers can expect at least a 20 to 30 minute wait for pizza. But if you swing by the food court before you do the rest of your shopping, you can place your order and have it bubbling away in the oven while you pick up everything else on your shopping list. If you time it just right, you'll be biting into your first slice after you've finished walking through the aisles. At most Costco's, you can even call ahead and place your order over the phone, ensuring a pizza that's hot, fresh, and ready when you are. Costco famously sells just a few different kinds of pizza. There's plain cheese, pepperoni, and the combo pie that consists of pepperoni, bell peppers, onions, olives, sausage, and mushrooms. But what if you wanted extra cheese, or a half-and-half -half pie with pepperoni only on one side, or a combo with no onions, or extra mushrooms? For the most part, the Costco food court will try to work with you to accommodate your requests. When it comes to extra toppings, this seems to be left to the whims and attitude of whomever is preparing your pizza, according to a Costco employee who dished on Reddit. It apparently depends on how busy the store is and how easygoing the managers and supervisors are. But some requests may just be a bridge too far. For example, whatever you do, don't try to ask for that combo pizza with no onions. Many Costco food courts insist that their vegetable blends are pre-mixed, which would make leaving just one ingredient out practically impossible. Costco hot dogs are custom manufactured into quarter-pound, high-quality behemoths that can satisfy even the hungriest of customers. Adding a fountain soda brings the total cost of the combo up to a scant $1.50, which is mere change when you compare it to other fast food meals. And this isn't just a great value, it's also delicious. Unlike the typical boiled-to-death wieners you might expect from a gas station, the Costco hot dog is an impressive, meaty sausage with lots of smoky notes reminiscent of a backyard barbecue. It bears more than a passing resemblance to a kielbasa, but without all of the gnarly nuggets of fat and gristle you'd find in a more coarsely ground smoked sausage. The all-beef hot dog isn't the only reason why this snack is so delicious, as the bun represents the gold standard in hot dog vessel technology. It's almost impossibly soft, but its most impressive feature is its ability to withstand the onslaught of as many toppings as good judgment allows you to add. No matter how much mustard, ketchup, or relish you squirt on, the bun never breaks down, gets soggy, or falls apart. It's something pretty close to magic, and all that for $1.50. The hot dog and drink are a fantastic deal at $1.50, same price they've been for 30 years. When it comes to maxing out your ratio between highest possible number of calories and lowest possible price, additional toppings can make all the difference between a meal that will leave you full for the rest of the afternoon and one that will have you scrounging for crumbs in your car a few minutes after eating. At Costco, there are more opportunities for free additional toppings than you may think, even in the case of the humble hot dog. In addition to the ketchup, mustard, and sweet pickle relish that you can apply as you see fit, many Costco locations also have some extra options tucked away behind the counter. These include diced raw onions and a vat of sauerkraut that's all free for the asking. Just like that, your standard-issue hot dog has been transformed into a smorgasbord of additional texture, briny flavor, and those all-important extra calories without adding extra cost. That's an all-beef hot dog. I'm fairly certain <laughs> that that cow had a very high quality of life. While pizza and hot dogs are available everywhere and universally awesome, you may find you start to get a little tired of them every now and then. Luckily, it turns out that Costco food court menus may vary a little bit by location. While Costco food courts always carry their stable standard offerings, many also add an extra item or two to try and incorporate a little local flavor into their menus. For example, Canadian Costco's often feature crispy chicken wings, bargain priced at just $6.99 for 10 wings. They've also got a take on French-Canadian poutine, which consists of french fries soaked in cheese curds and brown gravy. Some California locations feature the Al Pastor salad, which costs $4.99 and comes loaded with chopped romaine, fresh vegetables, and a soy-based protein spiked with Mexican seasonings. And if you love chicken teriyaki, you can even find that at some Costco's, though you'll probably have to visit a location in Japan to do it. When hunger hits, nobody wants to be confronted by the sight of a mile-long line outside a Costco food court. After all, when you're hungry, waiting even a few extra minutes can seem like an eternity. But instead of rage-tweeting about it, consider the fact that long lines at Costco can often translate into fresher, better, hotter food. 
It makes sense if you think about it. When lines are long, it means that more food is getting turned over more quickly, which makes it less likely that you'll end up with a slice of pizza that was prepared hours before or a chicken bake that's past its prime. There's no need to even ask employees to make sure your order is fresh. I feel like I know you well enough to know your mind is blown right now. That was really good. You haven't been this happy since your wedding day. <laughs> Cold churros are a major bummer. Nobody wants an old hot dog, and a chicken bake whose insides have congealed into a rubbery mass can ruin your whole day. But at the Costco food court, unlike many notable fast food establishments, you don't have to accept your bad luck by choking down your tepid meal and hoping for a better experience next time. As it turns out, that's just not the Costco way. At Costco, food court employees want you to have a good experience, so they'll happily offer a replacement for any less than fresh subpar items at no additional cost. Just remember that when requesting a replacement that the people who work in the service industry are human beings just like the rest of us. Thus, scoring an extra helping of please and thank you can work wonders for greasing the wheels on scoring some piping hot fresh food. That's something to keep in mind at any dining establishment, but it might just be especially true at Costco. A Costco membership isn't just good for saving money on groceries with a long shelf life. It's also fantastic for scoring some great deals in the bakery. Even if you can't eat 25 croissants before they go stale, there are still plenty of ways you make the most of your membership in the bakery. According to the website The Knot, the average wedding cake in the United States costs $500. Of course, prices vary widely by location and style, but if you want enough cake to feed a crowd, you're almost definitely going to have to plunk down a couple hundred bucks. But there are other, cheaper options. One possibility is spending $50 total on two Costco sheet cakes and flowers from Trader Joe's to build your own giant tiered masterpiece, as did one couple who shared the result on Instagram. They did this by cutting the cakes into smaller squares and configuring them into tiers. Then the whole thing was topped off with homemade buttercream frosting and the flowers. The result was an absolutely exquisite and unbelievably affordable masterpiece. Even if you don't happen to have a master chef among your wedding guests to pull off something like this, you can always practice your decorating skills in advance by watching YouTube videos. Costco's bakery doesn't just sell baked goods in bulk, it sells huge oversized baked goods in bulk. Take for instance its pumpkin pie, which weighs in at almost 4 pounds and can easily feed 12 adults. And that's not the only massive item available, as the muffins are also gigantic and delicious. But when they come in a pack of 12, it's understandably hard to eat them all before they start to go stale. You know, a muffin can be very filling. I know! <laughs> But there is a solution. Stick any you can't finish right away into the freezer, which works wonders. Just place your muffins in a freezer-safe bag and then pull them out whenever you're ready to chow down. You can defrost the muffins on your counter or in your refrigerator, or if you want a faster defrosting and a slightly warm muffin, you can put them in the microwave at 50% power. And if you're feeding these muffins to your kids, keep in mind that one of these huge pastries can easily serve two small humans. Just slice it in half and you're ready to go. Also, by saving the rest in your freezer, you won't have to stress about food waste. Giant muffins aren't the only freezer-friendly Costco bakery item. The butter croissants are another great option to stow away in cold temperatures. But unlike with muffins, microwaving croissants is generally not a good idea. Microwaved croissants can end up chewy and tough, which isn't exactly the delicious flavor you enjoy when you eat them straight out of the package. Instead, consider throwing your croissants into the oven for defrosting. Turn it up to 350 degrees, and by the time it's preheated to that point, you'll have a crispy and delicious pastry. The beauty of this hack is that you no longer have to wait for a big family gathering or work event to have an excuse to purchase a 12-pack. So go ahead and buy those flaky, buttery croissants in bulk whenever you want to. As long as you have a freezer, you can enjoy them on your own timeline. There are simple cake recipes out there, but let's be honest, while homemade cakes might come with an extra dash of love mixed in, they're a bit of a hassle to make. That's true even for basic cakes that you can whip up from a box and top with standard icing. It's a whole different beast to try to bake a specialty cake like tiramisu from the comfort of your home. 
tiramisu is made from soaking Italian ladyfinger cookies in espresso or liqueur before layering them with mascarpone or custard and adding a layer of cocoa powder. You then have to allow the whole thing to chill for hours before serving. And I just think that I don't ever need to cook tiramisu. When am I going to need to cook tiramisu? Is all that worth it just for the reward of being able to call it homemade? The correct answer is no. That's why it's so amazing that Costco has a giant 2.38-pound tiramisu cake available to purchase in its bakery. Not only do you not have to take the hours of time necessary to prepare one yourself, you'll also probably end up saving money. The individual ingredients for tiramisu can be expensive, but with the Costco version costing roughly $16 for a giant cake, it's one heck of a good deal. Bread is a pantry staple, but it may not be something you typically pick up at Costco. Sandwich loaves are usually sold in packs of two there, and even bakery items like French bread are typically sold by the double loaf or in bulk. So unless you eat a lot of bread or unless you pack a lot of sandwiches for your kids' school lunches, you might be inclined to grab a single loaf from your local grocery store instead. However, if you do that, you'd be missing out on some potential savings. In 2018, the food website Kitchen did a deep-dive price comparison of different loaves of bread sold at Costco, Trader Joe's, and Whole Foods, and Costco's typically proved to be the best buy. The catch, of course, is that you can't eat the entire purchase before it gets stale or goes bad. If that's your concern, don't hesitate to freeze those extra loaves, as the freezer is consistently a reliable option to extend the freshness period. I love bread. I love bread. When you think of Costco bakery items, you probably have in mind the fresh baked goods that are laid out on big tables and racks. But Costco also sells many of its baked goods as frozen foods in the freezer aisles, and they're often a better deal. For example, you can buy 24 cookies in the fresh section of the bakery for $7.99. But if you instead opt for a box of frozen cookies, you can score 180 for $34.99. That comes out to about 33 cents each for the fresh cookies versus 19 cents each for the frozen version. <laughs> Granted, most people don't need to buy 180 cookies at one time, but if you have the freezer space or a big event coming up, the frozen version is a much better deal. And these savings also apply to other frozen baked goods like bread and bagels. Considering that Costco is a warehouse store and its bakery churns out countless loaves of bread and other baked goods each day, you might think it's a good idea to show up and buy hundreds of bagels and croissants the morning of your next big event. But just because you can do that doesn't mean you should. And after all, it turns out that part of the beauty of Costco's bakery department is that it's easy to place an advance order. You just have to walk up to the counter and let the staff know what you need, how much you need, and when you need it. There are two important reasons for placing an advance order when you know that you need a large number of baked goods. First, it's the only way to guarantee that Costco will have exactly what you need. And second, it ensures that other customers can buy what they need as well. When a single person waltzes in and buys out every single cookie the store has on hand, that ruins the experience for everyone else. So protect your own needs and the needs of others by giving the bakery department a heads up. It's a courtesy to everyone, and it ultimately makes your life easier, too. This particular little-known secret may not work at every Costco bakery, but it's worth finding a location where it does work. If you're looking for another way to buy baked goods in bulk, consider asking your local Costco bakers if you can buy a box of uncooked cookies or croissants or other pastries that you can freeze and bake at home. The way it works is, when you ask for unbaked cookies, you receive a box of 120, already separated and ready to take out and bake. Many bakery items have signs hanging below them stating that you can ask for the unbaked product at the counter. That's a pretty good deal, and it's a great way to always have cookies ready to eat if you have kids. And if you're in Canada, there's more good news, as you can place an order for unbaked cookies online through the Costco Business Center's website. You just have to enter your zip code to see if delivery is available in your area. You probably already know that you can walk right into a Costco and grab one of their sheet cakes straight from the refrigerated section without having to order ahead. That's great for last-minute parties when you don't need anything special, but what if you're planning a themed birthday and you want an affordable and personalized cake? All you need to do is place your order in advance. 
Like most grocery store bakeries, Costco has lots of designs to choose from, and they can add the specializations to the top of the cake. One idea you might not have thought of involves doing the bulk of the cake decorating yourself while also ordering a Costco cake pre-scored with frosted piping. As explained by the blog Little Dove, the baker's pipe perfectly even squares across the cake in white frosting, which allows you to then individually decorate each square at home. When party time hits, you can then use the pre-scored lines to slice the cake evenly. To pull off this hack, when placing your order, check the box for scored flowers and then cross out the word flowers. Then place NA next to the option for colors and write just scored, no flowers. The result is a perfectly scored white frosted cake. And the best part is that it's a whole lot cheaper than buying a personalized cake from other bakeries. If you're not already following Costco on social media sites, you should go hit follow on all your favorite sites immediately. Like most brands, Costco uses its social media to share special deals and new product offerings, and they also offer some pretty cool bakery hacks. Take for instance a Pinterest pin that shows how to turn their giant pumpkin pie into the perfect Halloween party dessert. All you have to do is place a jack-o'-lantern stencil on top of the pie and sprinkle some cocoa powder onto the pie in the stencil's empty spaces. The same idea can work for practically any pie or cake and any stencil. Another Pinterest pin shows how to turn a chocolate cake into a festive winter wonderland treat using nothing but snowflake stencils and powdered sugar. And another pin demonstrates how to make a simple wedding cake using just a sheet cake and fresh flowers. If you're looking for cute, easy, and inexpensive ideas for at-home personalization, Costco's social media is an invaluable resource. The Costco website isn't just a place to search for great deals. It's also a valuable resource for great recipes. Not all of the recipes incorporate items from the bakery department, but there are plenty of them that do. Take, for instance, the Kirkland Signature Summertime Recipes page, which details how to turn a sheet cake into individual cake stars and also how to make dessert kebabs using churros. The website also features a number of breakfast and lunch recipes that incorporate croissants, bagels, and various buns as starters. For example, there's the Father's Day breakfast sandwich recipe that uses a bagel topped with sausage, egg, and cheese, as well as sriracha sauce to draw stitching to look like a baseball. Costco's website offers lots of easy and creative recipes, so add it to your favorites and start searching for ideas before your next shopping trip. Next time you're at Costco making the rounds and picking up some essentials, make a beeline for the frozen food section and load up your shopping cart with these products to help streamline your mealtime routine. Millions of other discount warehouse customers swear by them. Amy's the vegetarian frozen food go-to, understands the disappointment of a weak dinner, and comes to the rescue with its cheddar beans rice and cheese burrito. These filling burritos go from frozen to ready to eat in a few minutes flat. Enthusiasts range from growing kids looking for an after-school snack to adults who need a quick work lunch. These are some of the best frozen vegetarian entrees found at Costco, both in terms of price at around $10 a box, nutrition with 11 grams of protein, and taste. Instead of paying for Chinese food delivery, why not preheat the oven for a more cost-effective dinner? These sweet and savory chicken bites are delicious with rice and vegetables, just like you get in your takeout order. Crazy Cuisine Mandarin Orange Chicken goes from the oven to plate in under a half hour. The reason it's so good? The chicken and the sauce cook separately, which means they won't turn to mush when you heat them up. Costco pros know to stock up on this orange chicken to always have a restaurant-quality meal ready to go. In addition to being high in protein, they're free of preservatives, trans fat, and MSG. No BPA, no MSG, no BHA, no BHT, plus no soy, no sesame, and of course no nuts or eggs or milk or butter or salt or sugar or wheat. If your belly says burgers but your heart says salad, Trident Alaskan Salmon Burgers are a good compromise. With plenty of protein, they're also full of heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids. These burgers pack a great grilled taste but are still a modest 170 calories per serving. As cookout season approaches, it's smart to have a healthy alternative on hand for picnics and get-togethers. These salmon patties are also flaky enough to use in omelets or on top of salad if you're experiencing summertime burger burnout. 
These frozen organic whole green beans are an easy choice. Frozen right off the vine, they're as delicious as the day they were picked and make a super simple side. Sauteed on the stovetop with some Kirkland extra virgin olive oil or simply microwaved. A bag of these green beans is the key to a balanced meal even under the tightest time restraints. The big bag is easy to seal up and pop right back in the fridge. There will always be just the right amount of little green beans to make an authentic niçoise salad or a casserole. Costco shoppers swear by these as some of the freshest freezer produce. Kirkland Grilled Chicken Breast Strips are a Whole30, Paleo, or low-carb diet must-have to take the most time-consuming food prep step out of the equation. These chicken breast strips go from freezer to plate in minutes flat. They make getting lean protein easy and are a favorite of health-conscious Costco shoppers. Chopped up for chicken salad, shredded into quesadillas, or mixed up with pepper and onions for a fast fajita night, you'll never run out of creative ways to use this handy freezer item. Luca frozen macarons will make you feel incredibly chic when you share a plate of them for an after-dinner treat. These all-natural sweets taste as good as they look and come in a bunch of flavors, including chocolate and pistachio. Two fluffy almond cookies sandwich a rich filling, satisfying your sweet tooth in a light and unexpected way. They'll instantly make any event an elegant affair. Forget about going to a fancy French bakery, just pick up these delicate pastries on your next Costco trip. These golden sweet pineapple chunks have a bright tropical flavor that is perfect for any type of smoothie. Try blending it up in a breakfast smoothie with ginger, or later in the day with tequila and lime. Fresh pineapple can turn your kitchen into a sticky mess, but this pre-cut, perfectly portioned frozen version makes it much easier to bring a little bit of Hawaii home. Pineapple has immune-boosting benefits, so a bag of these golden sweet pineapple chunks can bring cold relief and a healthful boost, making them a must-buy. I got the pineapple! I got the pineapple! This Kirkland freezer favorite combines blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries, and an enormous bag will last you through several French toast breakfasts without causing worry about what's in season. They're perfect to spoon over ice cream or put in yogurt, and if this behemoth bag is more intimidating than inspiring, what you have left can be cooked down into a delicious jam that tastes like summer year-round. These kale and mozzarella chicken burgers are a dressed-up version of boring burgers, with leafy kale and salty mozzarella mixed right in. There is so much flavor, you definitely won't miss the beef. They're pre-cooked so you can go from starving to sitting down in less than 10 minutes. Defrosted and packed for an effortless office lunch, a few minutes in the microwave will bring you a lean, juicy burger that will be the envy of all your coworkers. Grain and simple two-minute grains are a hearty side dish and a high-fiber alternative to rice or pasta. The combination of wheat berries, quinoa, farro, and barley has a great bite. The grains are pre-seasoned, so they're already packed with flavor, even before the addition of vegetables or protein. Combine one of the four pre-portioned packets with the produce and protein already in your fridge for an instant lunch or dinner. The possibilities are endless, even when time is not. You can serve these mini chicken and cilantro wontons as a tasty appetizer or make them a filling entree by simmering them in soup or pan-frying them and serving alongside stir-fried vegetables. You'll find a few wonton and dumpling options in the Costco freezer section, but these mini wontons are hard to beat. The chicken, cabbage, and cilantro filling is delicate but full-flavored, and they come in a three-pound resealable bag. Because they're fully cooked, it only takes about five minutes to heat them through. These spring rolls are surprisingly easy to heat. You can bake them in the oven or pull out the deep fryer to create a super crispy exterior. They're a great appetizer, but they also make a fantastic low-calorie snack. Each package comes with a whopping 50 pieces, and they're stuffed with protein-packed edamame, jicama, carrots, cabbage, sweet potatoes, onions, and leeks. You'll have plenty to feed surprise guests and don't have to worry about preparing a sauce either. They come with a tasty sauce concoction made with soy, ginger, honey, and lemon. You can use this frozen shrimp as the basis for dozens of quick and easy weeknight dinners. Because they defrost quickly, you won't have to plan far ahead to use them. And shrimp taste delicious no matter how you cook them. Shrimp is the fruit of the sea. You can barbecue it, boil it, brawl it, bake it, saute it, days on shrimp kebabs. They're high in protein and healthy fats, making them a go-to protein choice for healthy meals. Frozen shrimp are much less expensive at Costco than at your typical supermarket, too. You'll find them in two-pound bags for the price of a single pound at a regular store. 
lasagna is usually a crowd pleaser, but it can be a pain to make from scratch. After boiling all the pasta, making the sauce, and creating all the layers, you can make quite a mess. Luckily, Costco's Kirkland frozen lasagna tastes good enough to be homemade, and it's ridiculously cheap considering that it feeds up to 12 people. It's pretty hard to make a homemade lasagna that large for less than $15. And Costco's frozen option is made with 100% ground chuck, vine-ripened tomatoes, whole milk ricotta and mozzarella cheeses, and no added preservatives. Marie Callender's chicken pot pie tastes almost as good as grandma's. The chicken itself is full-flavored and juicy, and it's swimming in a thick, peppery gravy. Add in tender celery, carrots, and peas inside a delightful crust, and you have yourself a well-rounded, delicious meal. Costco's 8-pack of pies is a total bargain. Each 10-ounce pie only runs you about $1.50. And since Marie Gallander's is made with tender white meat chicken, no preservatives, no artificial flavors, and no artificial colors, picking up a package of these is a no-brainer. These frozen meatballs take away the guesswork and mess of making them from scratch, and they taste homemade after they're thawed. Add them to the slow cooker with a bottle of teriyaki sauce for an easy appetizer, or toss them in your favorite marinara sauce for a pasta dinner. A six-pound bag of 140 meatballs at Costco costs about $3 per pound, which isn't much more expensive than a pound of ground beef. They're bite-sized and contain the perfect level of spice. And you don't have to cook the whole bag at once. Feel free to pull out just a few for lunch or dinner. These vegetables won't reheat into a ready-to-eat meal on their own, but they do make cooking much easier. They're pre-cut and can be used as a shortcut for most recipes that call for fresh veggies. Many of Costco's frozen bagged vegetables are certified organic, and most of the options at Costco come in at around $2 a pound. The Normandy blend, which includes carrots, cauliflower, and broccoli, is great for soups, stews, and stir-fry dishes. Few generic products have caught the attention of consumers quite like the liquor options at Costco. From vodka to whiskey and ready-made margaritas, Costco's just waiting for you to belly up to its full bar. Still, some of their liquors don't quite measure up to other options. The Kirkland Signature American Vodka is the Costco alternative for those who prefer domestic vodkas such as Tito's. At under $20 for a 1.75-liter bottle, it's one of the most wallet-friendly options on the list. It's reportedly distilled six times for ultra-smoothness. Having a great price isn't the only thing that makes Kirkland's American Vodka a good choice. Reviewers praise the liquor for its mild and sweet aroma, as well as its smooth and slightly citrusy flavor. However, like most cheaper vodkas, this is likely not the best choice available to you. As noted by the expert reviewers over at Good Cheap Booze, Kirkland's American Vodka is a bit too harsh and thin in the mouth for shots. It's best served with something in it, be it ice, a mixer, or even a splash of juice. A great way to use this American vodka is in a Moscow Mule, which, despite its name, is a classic American cocktail that debuted in the 20th century. Fill a tall glass, preferably a copper mug, with ice, and top with two ounces of vodka, four ounces of ginger beer, and a squeeze of lime juice. Stir gently and garnish with extra limes before serving. You're probably asking how a company based out of Washington State makes a scotch worth drinking. Well, like cereals in a bag and most other generic products, it's not Costco that's actually producing the stuff. While Costco keeps their lips shut when it comes to who exactly produces many of their liquors, the word on the street and on the bottle is that the manufacturer of this one is Alexander Murray & Co. The Kirkland Original Blended Scotch Whiskey has a nice caramel color and scent notes of vanilla, cinnamon, ginger, and, of course, peat. Flavor-wise, you'll notice hints of brown sugar, plums, orange, and malt. It's not overly complicated. Rather, it's a very basic scotch distinguished by its clean drinkability. And although Aquaman might think all whiskey is the same… Whiskey. One for Ahab there. It's not. But is this blended scotch whiskey the bottle you should turn to if you're looking to treat yourself to a high-quality dram on a special occasion? Probably not. But that certainly doesn't mean that Kirkland Original Blended Scotch Whiskey doesn't have its uses. It's a great scotch to have on hand if you like a nightly scotch and soda before you hit the hay. It's also a good option if you want something that's nice and dry, perfect for your favorite scotch cocktails or mixed into a boozy winter punch. At less than $25 for 1.75 liter, you can easily afford to be heavy-handed with this blended scotch whiskey. 
Crown Royal fans rejoice. The Kirkland Signature Canadian Blended Whiskey is considered a great dupe at a better price compared to the name brand in the purple bag. The Canadian whiskey was one of the three Costco spirits chosen to be tested in BuzzFeed's blind taste test. Panelists noted that, when compared visually with Crown Royal, the two side-by-side -side look the same as far as color and clarity. The amateur taste testers were split 50-50 when deciding which whiskey was the real deal and which was the Costco version, which is a pretty good indicator that when it comes to choosing between the two, you have an either-or situation on hand. Bah! Blended Canadian! The only whiskey is Irish whiskey. Kirkland's signature blended Canadian whiskey is another Costco spirit that's earned an exceptional rating from the Tastings website, scoring an impressive 91 points through their blind taste test. Best of all, Kirkland's Canadian whiskey costs less than $20 for the 1.75 liter bottle. Compare that to the $40 to $45 you'll spend for the same amount of the name brand stuff. It's a pretty solid bargain if you're a fan of Canadian whiskey in your highballs. What in the heck does the XO in XO Cognac even stand for? Well, as it turns out, it means extra old, which kind of makes sense considering that Kirkland's signature XO Cognac is one of the pricier Costco liquors to make it to the list, at a healthy average price of $50 for 750 milliliters, though that price may vary by location. To be considered XO, the youngest cognac in the blend must be aged at least 10 years, with the average age of all the individual liquors running 20 years or older. The result is a sweet and slightly spicy liquor that pairs well with cigars and is best served straight or, at most, with a couple of ice cubes. Its flavor is advertised as very light, very floral, with just a hint of spice on the end and enough notes to tell you that you're drinking a rich, complex cognac for the money. If you want to make this bargain bottle feel fancier when you sip it, store it in a nice liquor decanter and no one will know the difference. Grab it when you see it, though. This one is often only available during the holidays. What helps the Kirkland Signature Irish Cream Liqueur stand out from the pack is not only for its wallet-friendliness, but experts also find that flavor-wise it is better than the name-brand counterpart because it's smoother and more balanced. You'll pick up aromas of cocoa, cream, and, of course, Irish whiskey. You'll likely taste notes reminiscent of candy, chocolate, caramel, and hazelnut in particular. Given its inherent sweetness, most people enjoy Irish cream either chilled and served straight or over ice. But it's also delicious poured into a cup of coffee or a homemade mudslide. This is the one that got the buzz over Costco liquors in the first place. This list wouldn't be complete without Kirkland's signature French vodka. It was one of the three liquors included in a BuzzFeed blind taste test, and the panelists had some interesting things to say about how it tastes. Compared to Grey Goose, it tastes, quote, fancier. And another tester said drinking Kirkland's signature French vodka feels like I should be on a rooftop veranda. Despite the rumors, Costco is not simply rebottling Grey Goose and calling it their own. Kirkland's signature French vodka is made from the same water source as Grey Goose, which has received lower ratings in many blind taste tests and costs more than twice as much. Kirkland's French vodka has a distinctive viscosity, silky, with a medium-weight heft akin to white wine, according to the food website Kitchen. Its flavor is clean and bright with a subtle sweetness that makes it a great vodka for drinking straight or on the rocks. All of that and it's only going to cost you around $25 for the 1.75-liter bottle. No wonder it has so much buzz. This recent addition to the Costco shelves is not to be confused with Kirkland's long-standing and underwhelming seven-year small-batch bourbon. While the bottle lacks an age statement, it's one of the rare Kirkland liquor offerings that doesn't require a scavenger hunt to figure out who actually makes the stuff. Printed right there on the label is the name of the producer, Barton 1792 Master Distillers, which happens to be one of the most revered distilleries in the bourbon biz. Since we reported on the release in May, the reviews have begun to pour in, and the consensus is buy, buy, buy this easy-drinking Kentucky nectar, which clocks in at 45% alcohol by volume. Forbes magazine said the whiskey has a smooth taste and it has notes of cinnamon and clove accompanied by caramel and vanilla notes. For around 20 bucks a liter, this is an absolute steal, especially if you're looking to stock your bar with a solid everyday sipper. One Reddit user said, This is a great value bourbon. Its amazing finish and even better price give it a dedicated place on my shelf. And for those of you who prefer a bourbon that is a tier or two higher on the shelf, 
keep your eyes peeled for two additional Kirkland collaborations with Barton that are sure to be a hit, a single barrel bottle and a bottled and bond version. There is no better way to combat the scorching summer heat than a fruity cocktail, especially in the form of a frozen popsicle. Essentially adult otter pops, Kirkland's signature ready-to-freeze cocktails may not reach the lofty standards of a mixologist, but they will cool you down and give you a bit of a buzz. The alcohol by volume is only 8%, more or less splitting the difference between a lager and a rosé, so we're certainly not complaining. This is a variety pack, so you'll get to enjoy three refreshing flavors strawberry freeze, lime drop, and watermelon hibiscus. Each popsicle is only 100 calories and contains nary an artificial sweetener. While previous versions were made with vodka, the current offering uses other than standard orange wine as the boozy addition. Since this is a Costco purchase, you can expect plenty of pops. 18 pouches in each $13.99 package. But if freezer space is an issue, not to worry. These are ready to freeze, so you don't have to load them all in at once unless you're throwing a party, in which case, clear out plenty of room. If Frank Sinatra were alive today, the Jack Daniels fanatic would likely get a kick out of the Kirkland Signature Tennessee Sour Mash Whiskey. While the branding isn't explicit, it doesn't take much detective work to figure out who is behind this one. Not only did Costco release a behind-the-scenes video documenting the making of the whiskey, directly on the bottle, you'll find the signature of Mike Williams. We do extensive testing on it once it gets to the distillery, uh, just to make sure that we have uh, really good corn that we're making our Tennessee whiskey with. Williams is the owner of celebrated Tennessee whiskey producer Collier & McKeel, where he doubles as chief distiller. The company's Tennessee whiskey earned a 92-point rating from wine enthusiasts and was named one of the magazine's top 100 spirits of 2016. While this particular bottling may not contain the exact same juice as the Collier & McKeel offering, whiskey lovers are equally enthusiastic. Over on Reddit, there are plenty of comparisons to Jack Daniels. One Redditor who prefers the Kirkland Tennessee whiskey notes, it tasted sweeter and more mellow than Jack. Another reported, it is a bit like a Jack knockoff, but it has a little of its own flavor too. I really love it. Prices for the Kirkland Tennessee whiskey have been reported anywhere from $18.99 to $36.99. But if you can pick it up for less than the price of a handle of good old reliable JD, it's definitely worth it. Kirkland's signature seven-year small batch bourbon simply misses the mark where other liquors sold at Costco hit it. It is rumored to be sourced from the Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky, but there's also some proof that it may be manufactured by Jim Beam, and others claim it's recently started being manufactured by George Dickel. Either way, reviewers agree that it tastes more like Jim Beam. That is, it's okay. Just okay. At 51.5% alcohol by volume, it's very hot, meaning it has that harsh alcohol burn that generally turns people off from a certain liquor. And while it's strong, it's not complex at all. This seven-year small batch bourbon lacks the various sweet and spicy notes that make a spirit interesting. After all, that's what people like about bourbon, that while it's strong up front, it generally mellows out on the palate to showcase other flavors, making it enjoyable to drink. Bourbon is America's native spirit and is taken very, very seriously in certain circles. While Costco can provide a cost-friendly option and there will certainly be people willing to buy it, in all honesty, there are better bourbons that don't cost much more. According to A Bar Above, a website dedicated to craft cocktails, Kirkland's signature small batch bourbon is similar in price to brands like Maker's Mark and Bullet Rye, and those options taste better. Other bourbons that combine quality with affordability include bartender suggested Old Grandad, Old Forester, Buffalo Trace, and Eagle Rare. When it comes to liquor, the older the better, right? Well, not when it comes to this particular list. While the Kirkland Signature Blended Scotch may be one of the best liquor buys at Costco, its 24-year-old cousin doesn't make the cut. At about $70 for 750 milliliters, the quality for the price just doesn't hold up like Costco's better options. Overall, the aroma lacks depth and complexity. This Scotch whiskey also has a thinner mouthfeel and is quite astringent upon first taste. So we say thumbs down. 
The third type of booze included in BuzzFeed's blind taste test was the Kirkland Signature Spiced Rum versus Captain Morgan Spiced Rum. And while panelists commented that the Costco version is darker, sweeter, and tastes like, quote, a drunk gingerbread man, they generally preferred the Captain, which they claim tastes like honey and eggnog, but without the egg. Kirkland's signature spiced rum isn't the best buy on the Costco liquor shelves because at around $20 for 1.75 liter, you're not really saving that much money for a product that is, well, meh. If you've tried the Kirkland Spiced Rum and love the flavor, by all means, buy away. However, if you're looking for a steal with quality that will blow you away a la their French vodka, you're not going to find it here. Costco carries three store brand tequilas, Añejo, Silver, and Reposado. The Añejo gets points for being an aged tequila for less than $30, and the Reposado gets rave reviews from those who can get their hands on it. But the Silver falls short compared to its siblings. First of all, its flavor and aroma profiles contain very strong alcohol notes that overpower those of the agave and citrus that make a tequila sippable. This is the kind of tequila that results in shot face when you take it straight. Sure, some Sometimes that's all you need, but it's the type of low quality that gives tequila a bad reputation in some circles. Lady Tequila can be a harsh mistress, but when she is good to you, she is really, really good. If you want to explore all she has to offer, it may aid digestion, lower cholesterol, and provide you with a hangover-free morning, try the Añejo straight or over ice. If you want to make simple cocktails with your tequila, go with the Reposado. And if you want a cheap silver tequila to make a big batch of sugar-laden margaritas, the Kirkland Signature Silver will do the trick, but it's not going to blow you away doing it. At around $25 for a 1.75-liter bottle, the price is right for Kirkland Signature London Dry Gin. But like the other worse on this list, it simply doesn't stand out enough among its competition. After all, depending on where you buy it, you can get the same amount of New Amsterdam for a pretty similar price. So while Kirkland Signature gets points for its quote, satiny, crisp, dry, light body, it's not going to blow you away as far as value goes. Furthermore, the Kirkland Signature London Dry Gin is a poor choice for certain cocktails. If you like to throw back a few gin and tonics with lime every now and then, or you want to experiment with making Negronis, it's fine. However, a decent martini needs the right gin, and this ain't it. You want something with more complexity and additional floral and citrus notes to balance out the juniper. Tanqueray, Boodles, and Hendrix are all great choices, and at $20 to $35 a bottle, they aren't going to set you back much more than the Costco stuff. With access to so many high-quality, ready-to-imbibe mixed drinks, the Kirkland Signature Strawberry Margarita sadly drinks like an afterthought. If you happen to be attending a Jimmy Buffett concert, this might be an ideal pre-game beverage. Let's start with the positives. It comes in a double-sized 1.5-liter bottle, plus it's made with 100% cane sugar and real lime juice. As for the strawberry portion of the margarita, that falls under the natural flavors portion of the ingredients, and the taste is a bit too sweet and artificial for our liking. When it comes to the base liquor, double-check the label. In some regions, the margarita is your standard gold tequila and triple sec version, but in other locations, the cocktail is spiked with inferior agave wine. At least if you're going to cheap out, don't anoint your product as premium on the shelf or anywhere else. When it comes to eggnog, there is no denying the drink deserves recognition as a Christmas cocktail standard. When done right, as in using fresh eggs, milk, and nutmeg, the creamy, frothy, not-too-sweet concoction is bound to be a holiday hit. And then there's the seasonal Kirkland rendition, which is about as fresh as a that's-what-she-said retort. The good news is that the former wine-based beverage is now made with actual hard booze, a blend of whiskey, spiced rum, and brandy. Unfortunately, they are still being sold alongside the rest of Costco's liquor selection, which means it's just sitting out there in the room-temperature warehouse, which is a pretty good indicator that fresh eggs and milk are not part of the equation. Is it drinkable? Yes. And if you're throwing a holiday get-together, we understand the impulse to take the pre-made route. But if you can carve out some time, going DIY will yield far jollier results. Costco is fondly known for many things. A food court with delicious snacks, private label wines that rival award-winning vintages, and giant-sized packages of just about everything. But before you buy a Costco membership, keep watching to learn all you need to know about joining the club. 
Here's a secret that might just blow your mind. You don't need a membership to get in the doors. There are a few ways even non-members can check out the fabled Isles of Savings. The easiest way is probably finding a buddy who's a member and tagging along on their next shopping trip. Technically, only members can make purchases, but as long as your friend lets you scan their member card at the register, you'll be able to pay for your own 30-pack of toilet paper. Another way to get in is to get a Costco cash card. This gift card lets you shop without a membership, using the value on the card to pay for anything. Only members can buy Costco cash cards, so again, you'll have to know someone who is a member to get the hookup. But once you have that gift card in hand, you can give the store a real test drive. It doesn't stop there, though. Anyone can grab lunch or dinner at the food court. It's usually located near the exit, so just enter through the exit or near customer service to grab your favorite menu item. In some states, liquor must legally be available for sale to the public without any membership restrictions. In that case, even Costco non-members can shop Costco's extensive liquor department, which occasionally even has its own entrance. There, shoppers can find name-brand spirits as well as the company's private label Kirkland brand offerings, mostly in larger 1.75-liter bottles. Non-members can take advantage of some of Costco's health-related services. They can get eye exams since the optometrists are not employed by Costco, although they can't buy glasses afterwards. And in most states, non-members can fill prescriptions at Costco pharmacies, enjoying lower prices on both human and pet medication. However, prices on meds are even lower for club members, thanks to the Costco Members Prescription Program. Finally, if you really need a way to get your hands on some of those great Costco-only products, you can shop Costco.com or via Instacart, although non-members pay slightly higher prices and delivery fees. If you're getting a membership simply because you want to save big bucks on everything you buy, know that some items sold at Costco aren't much cheaper than they would be at a traditional grocery store. You know, we may not be as big and fancy as some other stores, but what's so fancy about high prices? This is why it's a good idea to do a quick recon of the store before you invest in a membership. Make a list of some of your most frequently purchased items and check the prices at Costco, then compare them to what you normally pay. You might find that the savings aren't significant enough to offset the annual membership fee. Another thing to consider, like any warehouse club, most of Costco's products are sold in larger sized packages. It might be cheaper when you calculate the price per ounce, but for perishable items, if you can't eat it all before it goes bad, you're actually losing money. We're not saying a Costco membership doesn't have its benefits, but those benefits vary based on what you regularly purchase. Does the $60 price tag seem too steep? Occasionally, Costco memberships can be found at a discount or with a bonus for new members in the form of a gift card. In 2018, a living social deal priced at $60 included the membership, a $20 Costco cash card, and assorted goodies ranging from a pack of batteries to discounts on meat and online shopping. Keep an eye on Groupon and Living Social for these types of deals, and be sure to grab them when you see them. We've also seen savings like these through banks and other organizations. Occasionally, there are even special deals offered for teachers, where they can get a coupon booklet with the purchase of a new membership. The booklet is good for $60 worth of merchandise, offsetting the initial investment. If you prefer to pay for your shopping with an American Express, MasterCard, Discover Card, or Diners Club card, you're out of luck. Costco only accepts Visa network cards for credit card payments, although you can also pay with a debit card, cash, check, or EBT. Costco had a long-time relationship with American Express starting in 1999, but discontinued that partnership around 2016, which is when Amex was no longer accepted in the warehouse stores. While Amex customers might be frustrated that they can't flash their plastic at Costco, Visa charges a lower fee, so hopefully those savings are passed on to members. The first thing you need to know about Costco memberships is that there are a few options. The basic membership is called the Gold Star Membership. Priced at $60, it's the minimum you can spend to get in the door and start throwing some of that Kirkland brand goodness, which is often 20% cheaper than most other brands in the store, into your extra-large shopping cart. The Gold Star Executive Membership is the other option for individuals. It costs twice as much as the Gold Star Membership. But before you dismiss it outright, think about how much you might spend at the store each year. You get 2% back on your purchases, so if you spend around $3,000 a year or $250 per month, that's enough to offset that extra $60 you spent on the higher-priced annual membership. Executive members also get extra benefits on certain Costco services. 
Finally, if you own a business, Costco also offers Business Gold Star and Business Gold Star Executive Memberships. The business memberships cost the same as individual memberships, but you can buy items for resale and purchase additional member cards for your account. What's more, special Costco Business Center locations stock specialized items like vending machine snacks, janitorial supplies, office equipment, electronics, and commercial equipment. When Costco discontinued its Amex partnership, it quickly aligned with Citi to offer an official Costco credit card. The Costco Anywhere credit card can be used not only at Costco, but anywhere else that accepts Visa, too. And there are plenty of perks and rebates, such as a percentage back for just about everything you buy, which ranges from 4% back for certain gas purchases to 1% back for everything else. You need a membership to get the Costco Anywhere card, but if you plan to apply for the credit card, just spring for the basic Gold Star membership, since purchases with the card will get you that same 2% back you get with the executive-level membership. The reward gets paid out every year in the form of a certificate, which you can redeem for cash at a Costco store or use in the store towards more stuff. Let's say you've weighed the pros and cons and finally purchased a membership, but maybe you discover that the store is too far away to make it worth the long drive, or you're having trouble storing all the giant packages in your small house, or maybe you've just grown weary of fighting the hungry crowds when you're just trying to get to the checkout with your bottle of Kirkland wine. According to the company, if you're dissatisfied with your membership, they'll refund the fee in full at any time, no questions asked. It's not even unheard of to buy and return a Costco membership in a single day. So go ahead and treat yourself to that Costco membership. What have you got to lose? With a Gold Star or Executive membership, you can get a second card for another member of your household. They just need to live at the same address as you do. These household members get their own photo ID membership card and can use it to enter the store and make purchases on their own. In addition to their additional household member, business members can also add members for $60 each. And since shopping is usually more fun with a buddy, know that you can always bring up to two guests with you every time you shop. It's a great way to introduce Costco to potential new members and have an extra hand or two to load up all your bargains into the back of your SUV. Are you in college or do you know someone who is? A Costco membership can help budget challenge students with well-priced beer, Cheerios, frozen pizzas, microwave popcorn, and other staples of college life. Depending on the Costco, you might find togas too. Toga, 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 toga. And you can save even more by buying your membership through UniDays, where you are eligible for a $20 Costco card. Of course, your other option is to wait until you go home to visit your parents and convince them to take you shopping with their own membership. Maybe you'll get lucky and they'll even pay for your stuff. Veterans and active members of the military are rewarded for their service to the country with a special promotion of their own. New Costco members who sign up still pay $60 for their basic membership, but they'll get that $60 back in the form of a booklet full of coupons for free and deeply discounted items. While visiting a Costco might be the last thing on your itinerary while you're traveling internationally, tucking your membership card into your vacation bag could come in handy. You could replace a broken suitcase, grab a couple of cheap beach towels, or buy a few outfits if your luggage got lost by the airlines. Or maybe you're just missing the taste of Costco's cheap and delicious hot dogs from the food court. There are more than 200 Costco locations outside of the U.S. as of 2019, and the company has an aggressive growth plan in Europe. And while the European Costco locations sell a lot of similar products to their American counterparts, you might be able to score some locally produced foods or other merchandise. But you know the funniest thing about Europe is? What? It's a little different. I mean, they got the same sh** over there that they got here, but it's just, it's just there, it's a little different. Your Costco membership nets you way more than just the opportunity to buy a 30-pack of your favorite granola bar or eat too many of the free samples. If you buy a membership, look beyond the awesome deals in the grocery aisles and see what else Costco has to offer in the way of services. Like to travel? As a Costco member, you have access to its exclusive travel service, which offers negotiated rates on vacation packages, cruises, hotels, and rental cars. Even better, the company recently changed its policy so that executive members get 2% back on travel purchases after the trip has been completed. Costco services also extend to savings that aren't quite as glamorous as travel. You can get special member pricing on new or used cars. As of February 2019, more than 1 million Costco members have bought cars through Costco in the past five years, with prices being estimated at around $1,000 cheaper than a more traditional car buying avenue. 
There are also savings on home repair services, appliances, insurance, and even smaller services like check printing or photo developing. Plus, Costco's automotive departments are an affordable place to buy new tires and car batteries. Finally, you can even get prescription glasses or contacts in Costco's optical department, which are staffed with opticians and optometrists to get eye exams. The discounts are eye-opening.